It's a homecoming Saturday on the campus of Kent State University. Welcome to another big October Saturday of ESPN's college football. Army's Black Knights in to see the Kent State Golden Flashes. With that we say hi everybody. Welcome to our telecast booth. Great to see you. Michael Regai, my partner Gerard Cherry. Military Academy football means you better run it and run it well. Army does that. Third in the nation, better than 320 yards per game in Gerard. Their senior stalwart, Larry Dixon, close to 3,000 career yards and knows his way to the end zone, too. He certainly does, Michael, and Larry's an anomaly. Because when you hear the terms fullback, power back, that's typically not synonymous with the term big play back. But guess what? Larry Dixon possesses all those skill sets and that he can pick up the tough yards as well as take it to the house with distance in mind. Had two huge performances in their wins over MAC opponents, Ball State and Buffalo. The Kent State story is simple. They're searching for their first win of the year. They'd like to think they could run the table from this point on. If they're going to do it against Army today, Nate Turyun and the interior of the Kent State defense are going to have to be stout. <laughs> yes, they will. Nate Turhoon, regardless one of the toughest players in college football, will be at the center of attention because he'll be right at the point of attack, Michael, because they like to run the ball right at the nose guard. It'll be imperative that Nate Turhoon has a big game in order for Kent to have success on the defensive end. Yes, that entire Kent State defense with a real task. It's to stop the camouflage uniform wearing Army Black Knights. Homecoming Saturday here at Kent State as we get set to go. Army at Kent State, non-conference battle on ESPN College Football. Old Glory in all of its splendor. You would uh, imagine that to be part of the emblematic symbol of college football today with uh, Army's Black Knights in town as Army and Kent State get set to go. It is a homecoming Saturday and all, if you like your college football with a feel of the, the autumnal chill in the air, you got it today. Tremendous day though. Temperature at about 47 degrees. There might be a, a drizzle or so later on this afternoon here inside Dick Stadium. Of this Army football team, they come in here with head coach Jeff Monken in his first season. Monken came from Georgia Southern, Gerard, where he took Georgia Southern three consecutive years to the FCS semifinals. They did such a great job at Georgia Southern that they made the transition to the FBS. So you got to be impressed with that. Then you see Coach Darrell right there, as well on Kent State side, Paul Haynes walking down the sideline doing his deal, getting his troops ready to play as well. And Paul Haynes, as uh, Gerard and I uh, spoke to uh, Coach Haynes this week, it was about for this football team trying to find a way to get this first win. They've had a couple of near misses against Ohio that we saw here on uh, ESPN and also against Northern Illinois. So we're set to go. Daniel Grochowski has got it teed up as the Black Knights from the Hudson come into Northeast Ohio. And let's play football uh, here inside Dick Stadium. This is Ernest Calhoun on the return. Calhoun in open space. Nice return to the 30-yard line for Ernest Calhoun. Now let's take a look at this Kent State offense under the direction of the, the sophomore quarterback, Colin Reardon, who has been banged up of late, Gerard. We've got a flag, and we're going to have to uh, wait and see. That flag came out late over on the far side. During the return, holding, receiving team, number eight, 10-yard penalty, first down. It's Don Willard, our referee today, and uh, Kent State. That was a late flag uh, on the tail end. The block uh, came, the hold came uh, behind the return of Ernest Calhoun. Colin Reardon, we were just mentioning him. What a game performance last week, didn't they? He was on crutches two days before UMass came in here last Saturday. And that's the type of leadership they're going to need today, Michael Otto Reardon, in that he's willing to play hurt because they're going to need all the skills that he brings to the table in order to win this football game. Well, Reardon's going to put that up. And did that get picked off? That is intercepted. As coming up with uh, the Army INT is Colin Reardon got picked off by Josh Jenkins. Jenkins, his third interception of the year, the sophomore ball hawk who wears number three. 
Hey, if you're looking for a player to avoid on that Army Black Knights defense, it would be Jenkins. Reardon just steps back and doesn't even really scan the field and survey it. Stares down his wide receiver, and that's a sure sign in bet that it's going to be an interception. Just throwing the ball up there. You obviously can't do that no matter who the opponent is. Need much better decision-making out of Reardon today for this Golden Flashes offense. He was looking for Chris White and got picked off. So the triple option, Military Academy staple, Army football, Movement, though, on that left side of the Army offensive line. That's Steven Shoemaker with a false start. And you start your game off with a penalty, bring the yard, a great return back, and then you open up on the offensive end. Offside, defense, number 34. Movement causing the offensive player to react. Five-yard penalty, remains first down. That's essentially three bad plays in a row by this Kent State football team. And that right there, Michael, is what Coach Haynes is going to have to sure up if his team is going to have a chance of winning this football game today. Angel Santiago is the very versatile quarterback. The first part of that triple option is that dive to Larry Dixon. And Dixon's uh, got, a, got a quick eight on his first carry of the afternoon. Girardi's a 240-pound senior out of Bremerton, Washington, averaging right at six yards a carry this year. <laughs> Leaving right there where he left off last week for his ability just to pick up meaningful yards. But the hold on that play was just enormous, Michael, so he should have picked up yards. It's a good look at Angel Santiago. Santiago touched down last week against Rice, fourth consecutive. This is Santiago. Got to the second level down near the 15-yard line. So Angel Santiago give him seven. And Gerard, they average better than five yards per carry of the football on the year. That they do in order to have success against the option based team, you have to shut them down on first and second downs. It is imperative that you not allow them to get more than five yards per carry because if you do that, you put them in a situation where they want you, where they can just dictate to you what they're going to do with the football. Larry Dixon joined by Terry Baggett and uh, Tony Giovanella. Dixon on the carry, good cut. He's inside the 10, he's got a first down. Hey, there, there's your five more yards as uh, we take a look at uh, this this army offensive unit as we said they are, are very very Corey Hobbs a 240 pound junior left tackle they don't have a lot of size up front the biggest is Matt Hugenberg the 310 pound center but they're a group Gerard again that take great pride in running this triple option right the reason why you can have success with a 250 pound lineman is that it's all about the defense being off their game because they're more reaction near reading than supposed to reacting again out of that triple option you see Kent State uh, trying to rise up put a hit on Aaron Kemper Kemper a 212 pound sophomore by the way Kent State defensively uh, going without the suspended star linebacker Elsie refuge suspended for a conduct uh, detrimental last week got suspended for a half Italiano did a great job right there filling in for refuge because that was a solid hit on the running back. Yeah, Jordan Italiano has moved into that star spot. Second down and eight. Football at the eight yard line. It's called second down and goal. Quarterback keeps Santiago. We got a late flag coming in, and that might be a hold. We'll have to wait and see. Mike Houghton, the, uh, the Holy freshman. Offense, number 57. Ten yard and right there, Mike Houghton, the 257-pound freshman, held, and he's going to lose the size advantage. As you see right here, as Houghton holds, you can't hold a guy, obviously. Look at that hole. Look at that was outside the play. Very impressive with the driving ability of this army offense when you discuss discipline though and trying to defensively to try to get this triple option stopped I mean it's, it's so much about technique and assignment is it not it certainly is and it's about being in the right place but more than anything what you're not seeing out of this kit defense is penetration you have to have that to shut things down Santiago will uh, flip the football that's a, a forward pass to Raymond Maples Maples with the grab but nice job there from Kent State as they had uh, Maples tracked. You see getting up uh, off the bottom of that uh, Kent State pile for the flashes. Being able to uh, make that hit. So Darius Redmond, their sophomore linebacker. That was a gain of four on that particular play. The defensive line did a better job of making, getting penetration. 
Ray Cunningham, Teryun, and Nate Vance going to be vital today. Matt Dellinger is a Mike linebacker. Jordan Italiano has moved up to LC Refuge spot for the first half. Santiago on third down will fire the crossing route incomplete. It was uh, intended for Tony Giovanelli. And in that coverage for Kent State was Nick Cuthbert, the third year sophomore. And Taniano and Cuthbert do a solid job of bracketing the receiver for the Army Black Knights in that particular play. And that's exactly what you have to do. They're not particularly strong on the passing game. So when you have your chances, shut them down. Daniel Grochowski out of the hold of a Clay Barton. So Cup from 32 yards with the wind at his back, and he'll drill that 32 yarder. Daniel Grochowski who missed a week with a viral infection and then came back to connect and drill a couple of field goal makes against Ball State. So Army's first drive after they came up with a Kent State turnover, they put three on the board. Kent State with a football. Army with the early lead when we get back. Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry, great to have you a part of a homecoming Saturday here on ESPN's College Football. Army. Picked up that turnover on the Josh Jenkins interception and turned it into 32 yard a field goal hit to take this lead. See Ernest Calhoun and James Brooks back in the deep spots. As for the second time here in the early going, Daniel Grochowski will hammer it away, and this one's going to sail through the end zone. And Kent State will start with the football from the 25-yard line. Well, Gerard, this Kent State story, as we know, two years ago, they went 11-3 under head coach Daryl Hazel, went 8-0 in the MAC, averaged 33 points a game. And then the last couple of years under, you know, Paul Haynes, every team's a different team. The last 18 football games are 4-14. Four and 14. Yeah, and that speaks volumes to the lack of success that they've had so far. And one of the things you understand the loss of Jason Bitsko at the beginning of the season, that can set you back as a program. But at some point in time, Michael, this team has to eliminate the mistakes and the poor decision making, and that's all correct. Though. It's not an issue of athletic talent, it's decision making that I'm seeing so far. Uh, Colin Reardon off that read, and he'll fire the football to Chris Humphrey. Humphrey will make the grab. That's a quick 12 yards on the out to get it in the hands of Humphrey for the first down. Let's take a look at this Kent State offense. He's flipped a few things around. Nick Holly is uh, now the feature back. Young man from Toledo Whitmer High School, Chris Humphrey, along with Casey Pierce, the tight end, the bellwethers of the receiving game. And then an offensive line, uh, Reno Rita, and uh, the right tackle, the freshman, Brock McCauley, two young players that they expect big things out of. That swing pass will find uh, Nick Holly over the 40-yard line to the 42. How important is it for to be able to play in front of the sticks with solid plays on first down for Kent State? Well, it gives you options on second and third down. You have waist down, so you can afford to have a loss or not a, as big of a game when you are effective on the first down. But one thing I'm noticing, Michael, early on because of what took place last week against Rice is that Ken is going for aggressive offensive passing attack because of the fact that they did such a poor job with Black Knights last week in covering the pass. Yeah, Army ranks uh, near the bottom in a lot of categories in the FBS. Had some movement as Reardon will trigger the throw and it was broken up. Well, that was broken up beautifully by an Army linebacker, Jeremy Timp. There's Timp. Outstanding young talent, 225 pound sophomore. Do have a flag on the play. Offside, defense, number 98. Got five yard penalty result in a first down. Richard Glover, the guilty party, but not the Army raving about Jeremy Temp. That's Glover there, but Temp with three interceptions, just a sophomore, the young man who broke up that throw. One of them for uh, the pick six. Right. Leading interceptor, leading tackler on this football team, definitely a playmaker, and almost had another one right there. Reardon has to be more careful and conscientious of what he's doing with that football. Right, that penalty on Richard Glover of Army will move the sticks for Kent State. The inside read to Nick Holly, and he got swarmed on. Well, with a camouflage gear, the uh, Army Corps, Joe Drummond, made the first hit there, along with linebacker Stephen. Richardi, there's uh, Glover that plays one of the defensive tackles. Mike Eugenie 
is their senior leader up front. And Kent State going quickly here on second and 10 after no gain for Nick Holly. This is Nick Holly off the cutback. And he ran into Big Richard Glover. Nose tackle, 98 Gerard, 270 pounds senior. Let's Eight. take a look at the rest of uh, Army's defense. We mentioned Jeremy Timp leads his squad in interceptions. He and Andrew King, both sophomores that they really think highly of. And Josh Jenkins is the guy in the secondary. We've already seen Jenkins come up with a pick. Just a sophomore. Third down and eight now, line to make of the 43 of Army. Reardon to put it up. Came underneath and fouled Chris White. White ran the comeback route, did it beautifully in front of Tevin Long, made the grab, first down, Kent State. And give credit to the offensive line because Reardon had all day and then some to throw that football. Nice job by White of coming back to the football and making the play for his quarterback, Reardon, who had been struggling of late. As you see right there, comes back to the football, finds an open hole, catches the ball. Nice job. Redshirt freshman, White, almost six foot three, about 210, maybe a type of young man that can be a focal point of their pass game going forward. And especially today when you consider the poor job in the pass that the Black Knights have done against the pass. This is Nick Holly. Got the edge. Josh Jenkins with that first hit, but not before Holly to the 29 yard line. That's eight that yards on first down. And be it the option or just your straight up handoff, if you get outside and there's no one there to contain it, Holly makes the right decision in doing that and picking up positive and meaningful yards. You got to set the edge on defense, and that was not set on that particular play. Nick Holly over the last three football games has uh, become the, the main man uh, offensively in the run game. And remember, this is a young man who converted to the running back spot, came in to this program as a high school quarterback out of Toledo Whitmer. Reardon on the move. Through the out. It's hauled in. Making that grab again. Chris White. White ran the out and Reardon put the football on time to him. All right, in that particular play, Michael, what you have is a situation in which the linebackers for the Black Knights have to drop back into the zone. They're overreacting to the, the play action fake of the run game, and that's exactly what occurs. If you go for it, there's going to be someone behind you. Great job by Reardon of locating the open receiver. It looked like Reardon starting to get into a rhythm a little bit. He's hit uh, Chris White on back-to-back -back throws. Certainly does, and this is a matter of being patient, not forcing the issue for Reardon in order for him to continue to have success. Throw the bubble screen to James Brooks. Brooks got cut down by Josh Jenkins. Well, Jenkins already with a pick and three tackles, very active, but isolating James Brooks, another one of the bigger receivers in the Kent State stable. And when you have a size advantage, that's what you want, want to see from an offensive end. Force the Black Knights to come up and make a tackle on these very athletic players for Kent State at the wide receiver position. Big and athletic. Hard to bring down open field. And one of the things of late for the Black Knights is that they have struggled tackling in the open field. And look at Kent State. Speaking of struggling, that is uh, last in the Mid-American Conference in converting in the red zone with just the four touchdowns. So Paul Haynes and his offensive coordinator, Brian Rock, trying to get that squared away. This is Nick Holly. Holly uh, running that uh, that that power off the left side. He got to the 10 yard line. He's gonna bring up third down. Tim made the stop for Army. An offensive coordinator Brian Rock, Michael, he's doing a good job of balancing out. It hasn't been all pass, pass, pass because of the ability to sprinkle that run in there. It's forcing the Black Knights to honor those play action passes. The line to make is at the seven yard line. Kent State looking at the third and three. And again, we just put up the red zone numbers. They've had some issues on third down as well. It's something they'd like to get rectified. Keep an eye on Casey Pierce here. There it is, just 10 to 22 on third and three yards or less. Well, Holly got drilled. Nick Holly absolutely got drilled as he tried to make that cutback. And coming up to, to make that hit, Luke Prohl out of his safety spot along with the freshman Scott Washington. 
Whenever you have the defensive line get up the field with that level of penetration, it's going to be dead to right as soon as you hand the football off. Like the idea of sprinkling the road to pass, but we better serve if you test the weakness of this Black Knights defense, which is the ability not to play the pass well. 27-yard field goal attempt from Anthony Melchiori. Melchiori with plenty of leg, and he will connect. He hit it from 27 yards away, matching the Army Daniel Gronchowski field goal make. A couple of field goals, possessions for each football team here at the opening court. We're tied at three. Homecoming Saturday with the good sounds at Kent State. Is uh, Black Knights from West Point. Army football team two up at four down in the year and uh, both of the wins are over Mid-American Conference competition they beat Buffalo on opening night West Point and also beat Ball State that's Josh Jenkins and the return spot we told you a lot about Jenkins already he's already had the interception three tackles in the early going Anthony Melchiori in the football <laughs> Football came off the tee as Melchiori was on his approach. Oh, you hate that. You already run down the football field. Next thing you know, the tee, ball falls off the tee. Nothing more frustrating than that. But it is a very windy day. I will say, Michael, the success that the Black Knights are having in the Mac, if they ever decide to go away from being independent, they will not be welcome. Oh, I, 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 I see <laughs> how you're positioning that. Huh? You keep beating Mid-American Conference squads, and have you ever had a mind to uh, be included? The answer would be no. That's Bye. what you're saying? I'd say no. Uh, so much tradition in history in uh, this program. All right, the Melchiori kickoff. Josh Jenkins on that returner. Check that. It was not Josh Jenkins on the return of four Army. was Chris Carnegie, so they kicked away from Jenkins. Carnegie, uh, the junior, with that short return. We do have a flag. During the return, illegal block in the back. Receiving team number 81. 10 yard penalty, first down. And once again, you negate a positive play by taking it back due to a hold. And it's so difficult to score when you have 80 plus yards of driving get down to the end zone, put yourself in position for a field goal or a touchdown. This doesn't help your cause at all. Yeah. So Army back offensively with a quarterback, Angel Santiago, a young man from Fontana, California. Ran for 106 yards. Better than 100 yards for the third time in his career in their loss to Rice. Look at the late pitch there. And on the tightrope of that sideline, what the outstanding execution there as uh, the late pitch on that carry was Terry Baggett. Baggett got 27. He's a senior out of Whitney Young High in Chicago. And there's Baggett. Look at the averages, Gerard. Baggett averages seven and a half. We mentioned Dixon averages six. Santiago himself averages better than five. Back in his eclipse a thousand yards before. It's not like he doesn't know what to do once he has a, his hands on the ball. Santiago's throw incomplete as he, he was not able to hook up with Edgar Poe. Poe was a big play receiver. Gerard Santiago and uh, his backup quarterback, uh, A.J. Schur, who also plays. They average together. Army throws the football only seven times per game on average. One of the reasons why they're third in the nation when it comes to rushing football because they just don't pass the ball. When you're getting five yards of carry, you really don't need to pass it. But obviously, in a situation with offense moving the ball, you need to have that element of to your game. Well, we say that, and uh, Santiago hooks up with Kelvin White, the big 240-pound junior tight end. He came into the program as a quarterback. Kent State on the hit, Carrick Roan. Roan, a 185-pound sophomore, and of course, Nate Holly. How good a football player is Nate Holly? <laughs> Excellent football player, and it's one of these type of games where one of the leading tacklers in college football is excited because he knows he's going to get the opportunity to have a lot of plays. Army on third down, converting 
Kent State got the stop they wanted there. Larry Dixon on the carry, and he absolutely got devoured by Matt Summers. Where's number 33, 240 pound freshman out of Kent Roosevelt High? And the key to it all is penetration. If you're going to stop any type of running player offense in general, the defensive line has to be the one forcing the issue at the point of attack. And right there, you had across the board the Kent State defensive lineman in the backfield of the Black Knights. Alex Tardiu to kick the football away. James Brooks going to get out of there. Maybe not the best of decisions as that football is going to be down by the Army punt cover team inside the five yard line. 49 yard boot without the return. Colin Reardon in the Kent State offense trying to break the 3 3 tie when we get back. Returning alum here in the beautiful campus of Kent, the city of Kent, Kent, Ohio, Kent State University. This homecoming Saturday, they had their football captain's breakfast today. Great to see so many of the Kent State football captains from days gone by return. The course always oh, tremendous following as the Black Knights of the Hudson travel here at Dick Stadium. Colin Reardon has now hit four in a row as that quick bubble screen will find Chris Humphrey. Humphrey got wrapped up by Josh Jenkins, but that first down bubble got six for Kent State. And that's exactly what you're going to do on the offensive end for Kent. Until the Black Knights prove that they can stop you via passing, you keep on throwing that football. Colin Reardon now six to seven for 52 yards in the pick. Of course, that pick was by Josh Jacobs on the first throw of the game, but he now has hit five in a row. And at some point, the Black Knights are going to have to add some pressure to their, to their game plan in order to slow down Reardon, but he's releasing it that quick. There's nothing much you can do. Anthony Murray now offset. And this is Murray, and he got swallowed up again. That sophomore, Jeremy Timp. Where's number 39? 225 pounds sophomore Gerard. He's like a heat seeking missile quickly in that Kent State backfield. Yeah, he definitely had his radar on Melchor because he was right there in the backfield with him. Excellent job by Kent for getting to the football and make the play once again. He's a leading tackler for a reason for this Black Knights because of plays just like that. Excellent play by Tim. Well, there you see the numbers on, and I mentioned the three interceptions from Jeremy Tim. Now third down and nine, back of the six. Reardon will trigger the out. What a terrific grab made by James Brooks. Brooks ran that route at the 13-yard line, and ball placement delivery from Reardon, superb. <laughs> yes, it was, and Reardon released that football before Brooks was even out of his break. That's a pro-style throw right there, Michael. Very impressive play and catching a part of Reardon and Brooks. Colin Reardon in a bit of a groove as you look at uh, James Brooks. So he's big play explosiveness, averaging 23 yards per catch. Motion now from Casey Pierce. Reardon will keep the football. Colin Reardon. Well, that uh, was bad ankles, but he went airborne to the 22-yard line. Reardon got five. As Tried to hop his way over Ryan England. And I appreciate his effort and the heart and ball with that, but we can consider his injury issues and the fact that you're going to have freshmen and sophomores come in. If he is to get injured, you might want to consider taking that out of the playbook for today. Yeah, you're right. Redshirt freshman backup Nathan Strock, he's been injured too. George Bolas, the third quarterback, true freshman, looking to redshirt him. Reardon, straight quarterback draw. A lot of green in front of him. Reardon I dipped that to the outside or he probably could have got about five more yards, but he did pick up 10 first down Kent State inside 40 seconds left opening quarter. Well, obviously ignored our advice, but great play on the part of Reardon. You can see by the way he's running there's some gippiness to his game, but you see the numbers right there 40 rushes 75 yards one of team reading rushers on this football team. And great effort on the part of Reardon right there. You saw him. You were here on the call last week. Hit a couple of big ones in the ground game last week. Yes. You want him to do more with the passing game as opposed to running, but you'll take that when it's a positive play. Reardon picking up the first down. Go back to the ground game. 
Even a shake by Anthony Murray, but how about the open field one-on-one -on -one stick from Josh Jenkins off the corner? <laughs> Josh Jenkins getting the name for himself as well as a playmaker on this defense for the Black Knights. And that's exactly how you play cloud corner. You come up, you fill the gap, and you make a play. You've been there, haven't you? Been there. A timer, Used to do that. A timer 100. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 15 minutes in the books. Paul Haynes at Kent State selling to his football team this week. Why not go 6-0 in the second half of the football season? We'll see if that's the mission. Kent State and Army tied at three. Now you see uh, some of the, the student body bundled up today. Temperatures hovering about 45 degrees. My partner, Gerard Cherry, he would be more bundled than that but yeah you wouldn't be caught in those stands today would you <laughs> you're you're very pleased to be up here in the the warmth of the booth i think it's a terrific day for football inside dick stadium is kent state back with it first play of the second quarter well they wanted to hit the throwback there with misdirection to nick holly but very well done by armies uh, mike eugenie 92 he wears uh, out of uh, the state of pennsylvania yeah, you have a hard time pulling off misdirection plays on a disciplined defense, and especially one from our armed forces unit, because what are they predicated upon? Being disciplined. Right. Now we discussed uh, the, uh, the tremendous heritage tradition of Army football, West Point, New York. This is third down and six, blitz. Red picked it up. He delivered to Josh Boyle. Rifled the strike to him in the seam. Well, they caught Army in a blitz, and Reardon detected it, Gerard, for 24 yards. Yes, yeah, so and Hayden Pierce has to do a better job of Army of dropping back into his zone because you're going to get that all day. If there's something in front of you, there's definitely going to be something behind you. A great job by Reardon on that occasion of diagnosing it and hitting the correct player in the process. The junior, Josh Boyle. And Boyle on the season but against UMass last week he had his most productive day of the year with the five catches rear double move and his toe is caught excellent grab by James Brooks they sold that extremely well on the double move Gerard for 22 yards and love the play call on the part of Brian Rock as he diagnoses the right plays to go against this defense, because when you look at who has the better athletic talent on the football field, you have to give that to Kent, and they're utilizing it as we speak. Colin Reardon really in a groove right now. As uh, he is on fire playing pitch and catch with his receivers. Red zone time for Kent State against his Army D. Again, corner blitz coming, Reardon's throw. Intended for Casey Pierce and was off the hands of Pierce. His coverage from Andrew King, the sophomore Mike linebacker for Army. And yeah, coming to this game, Kent did not have any success. Memo will be a kind way of saying it as far as throwing the football. But thus far, they've done a great job of locating open receivers. And again, using that greater athletic talent to their advantage. This is the 11th play of the drive. I remember Colin Reardon threw that pick, ill-advised throw on his first of the day. Since then, he's hit 9 of 11. Reardon off play action. Casey Pierce with a catch. Pierce to the 12-yard line. That got six. He's going to bring up third down and short. Well, Coach Haynes talked about why not going 6-0. It's going to be key in these situations in the red zone that they show improvement. Here you have a chance and opportunity to get six points as opposed to line up for the field goal to make a statement that you are serious about playing better in the second half of this college football season. Mm -hmm. See what they dial up here on third down and four. We showed you on the last drive some of the issues they've had. Third down in the red zone. Reardon will trigger the slam off the hands and it could plead. He wanted Josh Boyle, but bearing down off that uh, that corner was a Ryan England who made an, an impressive stick on Boyle. Yes, Ryan England brought it home right there, and Boyle said to himself, Colin, do not put me in that situation. I won't live to play another down if you keep putting me in those type of setup spots. But you got to do a better job again if you can't stay in the red zone, getting touchdowns as opposed to field goals if this one is a success. 
Left hash, 29-yard attempt for Anthony Melchiori. Chris Humphrey will put it down. Melchiori lotted the leg, and he's perfect for the second time in the opening half. Field goals, position battle, three of them. Two Kent State, one Army. Give Kent State 6-3 lead as they put points up on that possession. Got to love the music always. College football campuses, ESPN College Football, non-conference tilt today. As Paul Haynes and his Kent State Golden Flashes to Rod. Last couple drives have been impressive. He put six on the board pair of field goals. <laughs> it certainly has been, Michael. Coach Haynes, you're happy about the fact that your offense is showing some vitality and some life because prior to this game, the offensive output was anemic. There was none. So, yes, you are encouraged by the fact of an 11-play drive for 65 yards and a 13-play drive for 84 yards. Carnegie from the 10. Got a seam. Kent State finally getting Chris Carnegie on the ground, but not before he had a 21-yard kickoff return. So Army is going to start at the 31-yard line. Decent operating position. Kent State, though, has done a solid job against this highly effective triple option run game of Army. Again, they come in here, do the uh, Black Knights, averaging 323 yards per game on the ground, third in the nation. And uncharacteristically, they got away from the run, but now they're back at it and having great success. Well, we see that, and look at how they exposed uh, that, that quick power run off the front end of the uh, triple option, 12 yards for Larry Dixon. But there it is as you look. I mean, this is no secret going back the last four seasons, the way they run the football. And they're going to test you in the middle. You see right there, 346, 369, first, first, third, third. Whenever you're doing that at FBS, that means you are running the heck out of the football, and they do just that. But from the defensive side, you know what you're going to face. Now force them and shut something down so that you can control and dictate what they're going to do with that football. After Dixon got 12 speed option, and this is Angel Santiago. Well, that is a staple, quarterbacks uh, of military academies, speed options, Gerard, with that quarterback getting to the edge. Yeah, and the great thing about that for a quarterback, Michael, is that you don't have to worry about a pre-snap read when you're running options. It's all about what you do once the ball is snapped. And Santiago does a good job right there, picking up positive yards by reading the play of that defensive end and turning it upfield. Well, did you see the block that Larry Dixon, 240-pounder, got on Matt Bellinger as he ushered Santiago to that edge got six on second and four Santiago to keep the football very close to a first down line to make was at the 46 yard line and Santiago looks like he gained that very methodical approach to playing football when you run in the manner of fashion which they do and if you can't stay you got to weather the storm Ben don't break Strange field goals if you need to, because that is the key part. They're going to pick up their yards, but you can't break at the red zone area. That's exactly right. As Gerard and I talked to Paul Haynes' defensive coordinator this week, Brian George, he feels uh, his group up front continuing to get better. Back to the ground game, and uh, there's evidence of that as that carry it came from Larry Dixon, but uh, Dixon got banged down. State's front. Now that's what Richard Gray, John Cunningham, Nate Terhune, Nate Vance. He just raved about Nate Vance to us this week. He sets the entire tone. That Leo, that defensive end, sets the whole tone for their defensive front. Santiago off that reverse pivot. And kept the football on the ground. That carry again for Big Larry Dixon. Gerard, that, that's 240 pounds. It hits that hole with uh, a lot of power and force. <laughs> and conviction to go along with it. And on that particular play, Michael, Black Knights doubled down on Chad Bush with a big body for Kent State and gave Dixon the hole and spacing needed necessary to pick up positive yards. All right, third down and four now. Angel Santiago again running that speed option. Santiago in open space 
Finally got derailed inside the 15 yard line. Maybe a touchdown saving tackle from safety Nick Cuthbert. 27 yards, Santiago. Speed option, the same thing they ran out here at midfield a couple plays ago. Exactly. And what Santiago was able to do on this particular play was that he had running lanes. As you look and see, Holly's getting forced out. He tries to force it back in, but if there's no one to fill in the gaps, that's what's going to happen and take place for this Army offense. And that if Santiago has lanes, he'll hit the holes with conviction and pick up positive yards. Big play, Santiago. This is Larry Dixon. A pretty good stop as a tracking net from the backside was Matt Dellinger, the middle linebacker, on the takedown to Dixon. And you're seeing six or seven yards put off for Kerry Michael. That can't be frustrating, but it goes along with the program, what they want to establish. Well, here's Santiago, and uh, when you look at all over uh, the FBS, that's fifth among running quarterbacks. That's how good they are. But again, you think of military academy football. It's all about the triple option. Used to be the wishbone back in the day. Santiago got submarine there, though. Well, how about the play from Chad Bushley? There's Bushley. He got in and made a stop. That's what it's going to take in order to have success against this particular brand of option. You have to have penetration over the center. And right there, Bushley gave you just that. Hence, Santiago could not find a running lane because he was tackled in the backfield. John, I'm going to take that back because there was a number change. That's Zach Singer. Singer, look at a good singer. There's Zach Singer on that hit. He's wearing 98 today, 310 pounder. So let's make that correction. Zach Singer on the stop. Look at the red zone for Santiago and this Army offense. Uh, Going to stay in the ground game uh, is Santiago. That's Matt, Matt Giacinta. Got his first carry of the game. Giacinta, 225-pound junior. Nate Holly made the stop. And that football is resting between the two and the three-yard line. And well, that moved the sticks first and goal. Army looking to take the lead here as we approach the midway part of quarter number two. Great to have you along today. Maples. Did he get in? Touchdown. Raymond Maples, the senior out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, with his second touchdown of the year. Nothing fancy about it. Straight ahead. Good penetration by offensive line. And that's 257-pound tackles out there. You're going to have success no matter how big or small your offensive linemen are. And Nate Terhune, Nate Vance, Kent State both had had hits on Maples. As Daniel Grochowski will add the PAT after falling behind on the Melchiori second field goal from Kent State. Raymond Maples on the touchdown run right here to get Army back on top as he broke a couple of tackles and found the end zone. George, okay. The Black Knights of Army get the Raymond Maples, the senior, who is then one of the top rushers in Army history. And they're deployed here in Northeast Ohio as they go 10 plays for 69 yards, a little bit less than five minutes. Didn't have to put it in the air, Gerard, before Maples got in the end zone. Army back on top, 10 6. And doing what they do well, running the football with conviction in the process. Got to keep this football on the ground. That line drive kick still rolling around. And Kent State's senior tight end, Casey Pierce, had to get on the football. Although when you do that now, when you uh, roll that kick around, you're going to give Kent State solid uh, operating position, field position to start this drive near the 30-yard line. Colin Reardon, who last week, and Gerard was here, calling the game, analyzing it on ESPN. Reardon was on crutches two days before the football game last week, and a pretty strong performance against UMass, albeit in a loss. He's been hot today. Back to the ground game. Oh, Nick Holly, not much there off the left side. As you see in those camo uniforms, the camouflage gear today, 
Army all over that as uh, they got the stop from Stephen Ricciardi, the senior linebacker. So far today, there hasn't been much opportunity in that interior of the defensive line for the Black Knights. The success has come from passing the football as well as running to the outside for the Golden Flashes. So no gain for Holly. Now Ernest Calhoun in the backfield as well. Throwing the seam is hauled in by Chris White. White just settled down in that open void and reared and found him. Nothing wrong with that. Very conservative pass play. Turn around, pitch and catch. Go where the defender is not. Simply make an easy play pass. Keep the, hopefully the sticks are moving if you are the Kent State Golden Flashes. Got seven did that hookup from Reardon to Chris White. White already with his third catch of the afternoon for Kent State. That's a big play now. After Army took the lead on the Raymond Maples TD, third down and three. Reardon gunning that throw, and he almost got picked off as Josh Jenkins breaking on that throw beautifully and not able to come up with the INT, but Kent State's got to kick the football away. And Reardon, again, staring down your receiver. When you do that, you give a key to the defense of where the ball is going, and great job of breaking on the football on the part of Jenkins, the Black Knights. You cannot stare down a receiver because you're asking and telling the DB to come play the play. Please come make a play. You gotta do a better job of surveying the football field. If you're Colin Reardon. First punt of the afternoon for Anthony Melchiori. He'll hit it from his 25. Josh Jenkins on the return. And this is returnable. Jenkins let that football go over his head. Better get out of there now. And Kent State will uh, be the beneficiary of that on a 61-yard bomb from Anthony Melchiori down at the four-yard line. Excellent punt by Melchiori. Got to fill that ball if you Jenkins. One thing you cannot allow to take place is for that ball to touch the ground inside the 10-yard line because you're asking for a situation with your offense if you end up against the goal line. The defenders, we love those situations. And for offense, it's a tough haul to move that football that far down. Ah, uh, yeah, the camouflage gear being worn here by all, even the ones in the stands that favor the Black Knights of the Hudson Army on top 10-6. Michael Regai, Gerard Cherry, our producer Jeff Bentley, our director Mike Simons, Tom Boschenek handling our graphics coordination, all of our terrific ESPN college football crew. Army with this lead, last drive and the touchdown from Raymond Maples. This is Angel Santiago off the the triple option. Kept the football, and Santiago uh, got five to bring up second and five. When you're on offense. That's a beautiful thing. You know, you get five yards per run per play. That's what you're asking for on this offense. And right now they're doing a solid job picking up positive yards. Inside six minutes left in the opening half. Santiago again off that play fake will keep the football. Ran into Nate Cuthbert who make, made the hit. Well, Santiago getting uh, belted by uh, Nick Cuthbert. And that's the danger of the option because right now the Golden Flashes are so conscientious of defending the outside. And you see the graphic right here, career backs. We got Raymond Maples, Larry Dixon, Terry Bagger. Look at you guys per carry. Yeah. 7.7, 6.8, you can get the job done. And that's why you're leading the FBS in that category when you have that level of production on your running backs. Well, Maples and Dixon both with a chance to go over 3,000 career yards, run that option, and this is Raymond Maples. He got the corner outside the numbers before Nick Cuthbert dragged him out of bounds at the 25-yard line. He got eight first down. And that's the beauty of the option. Okay, we got you on the inside, so now you're going to overcompensate and try to take over the inside. Guess what we're going to do to you? Now we're going to attack you on the outside. Raymond Maples, young man out of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. He has been just a staple of the Army run game in his career at West Point. Dixon. Now look at the power over the 30-yard line to the 31-yard line. It's going to move the sticks again, first down Army. You know, the situation of attack and counterattack. Now you play the outside, we'll come back inside. 
And the Army will nickel and dime you literally on the ground game all day with this type of approach. Defend the outside, we'll go inside. And there it is. You take a look at the rush yards today, but this is to be expected. Again, Army averaging 323 yards per game on the ground. Santiago, late pitch. That late pitch from Santiago. At times you think, well, maybe it's a little bit dangerous, but Santiago was able to get that, uh, that pitch to Joe Walker. Walker is just a sophomore. That was his first carry of the day. Well, that's a great point, though, Michael, because that's what you want to do on the defensive side is force turnovers with fumbles by making it Santiago make a poor decision with the football. But when there's no one outside, Santiago is taught to pitch the ball to his tail back, half back, slot back, whatever type of back he has on the side of him. <laughs> there's a lot of them to choose from. Santiago on the move right. Late pitch again. Uh, look at Army. Boy, they run that option beautifully as uh, Santiago, a master. Terry Baggett, the 220-pounder, got 14 yards. You just saw Baggett on that list with Maples and Dixon. And the key part of this, again, is anyone outside of Baggett? No, there is not. So what does Santiago do? Make the correct decision, pitch the football, Baggett picks up a first down. <laughs> Our referee today, Don Willard, letting everybody know about that infraction, and that's going to cost Army, and it takes away that big 17-yard option run from Terry Baggett. So those are the things, though, that, you know, if you're head coach Jeff Monkin, offensive coordinator Brent Davis, those are the ones when you're rolling on the ground you don't like to see. Nothing sets you back, especially when you're moving in such a positive manner and fashion. On second and 17, Santiago to keep the football. And Santiago got drilled initially as coming up for Kent State to make that first hit was Dustin Moore. Moore is a redshirt freshman linebacker, wears number 30. And what you notice is that Dustin Moore comes in there, fills the gap, doesn't make the initial tackle. Dillinger finishes it up for him, but that's what you need, penetration. That's the key to stopping the option. You have to get penetration in the backfield. Exactly what you're speaking of as Army takes this time out here, and they're looking at a third and 15, but as we spoke to Army's offensive coordinator, Brent Davis, now he was discussing about you've got to be able to get blocks on the perimeter, and that's, it was all as you said, and you're pointing it out beautifully, Gerard. He was saying related to our pitches out of our triple option, and there's the offensive numbers we've been talking about all day. And yeah, as you know, there's a huge difference between the passing and the running game. But when you're picking up 323 yards and you're scoring 27 points, you can live with running the football. The key part is not giving your opponent turnovers, and that's where Army's been struggling of late, and that the turnovers have led to scores, and you can't do that if you're going to run a one facet operation in the offensive end just running the football. Yeah, and I think it's interesting to point out that both head coach Jeff Monkin and his offensive coordinator Brent Davis, they were disciples of Paul Johnson, of course, Georgia Tech, and this triple option approach. Now Santiago looking to put the football in the air and his throw is incomplete. Santiago's throw is incomplete as he was uh, looking for wideout Xavier Moss, the sophomore. And that is the issue for you in the option run oriented football team is that when you need to pick up that big down and distance, as far as yards concerned, you have to rely on the pass. Chances are you're not going to pick it up because it's not your strong suit, nor do you do it enough to be effective at it. Well, and Gerard, look at how Angel Santiago and his offense, the Army offense, are on the move and running the football effectively. They get that big penalty to set them back way behind the sticks. Can't find an answer. Exactly. Takes a tackle for a loss or a bad play, in which it leads to a penalty on their part, and then you put the offense in a bad situation because of the inability to pass. Alex Tardu did not get much of that. You saw that kick very poorly off the side of his foot and is going to angle out of bounds at the 40 or at the, they're going to mark that at the 43 yard line of Army. That's just a 20 yard net punt. Yeah, you'd like to say the wind got a hold of that one but any level, you have to do a better job of keeping football. And you don't want to give a short field to this Kent State offense, considering there's only three minutes and some change left in the half. All right, so Kent State now, after just the uh, the 20-yard kick, and uh, as you see, the rain really starting to pelt down now. 
as Colin Reardon will bring this Kent State offense back in the football field. Reardon a sophomore out of Poland Ohio Seminary High School. Back to the crowd game Nick Holly second level and more. Holly explodes inside the 20 to the 19 that's 24 yards got to that second level right now. And Kent State excellent job on the part of Brian Rocker calling the correct play in that the Black Knights were playing for the pass. But what did you get hit with? Up the middle, draw type of a play on the part of Holly. He does an excellent job of getting to that second and third level, picking up positive yards. A few times today that we've seen success running the interior of that line scrimmage for the Kent State Golden Flashes. Zone read blockage scheme off the read option, and it opened up beautifully. Nick Holly, there he is over the last five. Average you better 67 yards total offense. Reardon will fire the out way over the head of Ernest Calhoun and incomplete. And interesting enough, Michael, that no shots are being taken to the end zone. Another play in which you're not getting verbal on that. I'd like to see that more so out of this offense to attack the red zone. We haven't seen that today. We see more of the safe curls to the sideline type of approach for the offensive end. At some point, you have to attack that red zone and go for touchdowns as opposed to relying on a safety play and getting a field goal in the process. You see the plays being called in for the Kent State sideline. Nathan Strock and also Jack Williams. Backup quarterbacks. And that play clock hits zero. They get a timeout first. Kent State did get a timeout over on their sideline. They just got the attention there of uh, that that line judge. So Paul Haynes is offensive group and offensive coordinator Brian Rock who's upstairs. The youth on this Kent State offensive unit though you see it there. There's only five seniors that start of the first 22 on both sides of the football O and D. Yeah and that is an issue but at some point when you reach the midway point of a football season certain mistakes and plays that you Making for this Golden Flashes offense can't take place, even if you do have a very youthful group of guys out there. Now, next season, they'll be better, in, so to speak. But it's all about today and making the most of the opportunities that they have. Trying to take the lead here. They're going to need to get in the end zone to do it, though. Paul Haynes' squad down by four, late second quarter. Just second and ten for Reardon. Going to gun end zone. Well over the head of James Brooks is uh, and, and that was a double coverage as well as Army had Brooks bracketed very well defensively and that might explain why they don't go that much to the vertical passing game because if you're making decisions like that throwing to double coverage you're just asking for a turnover to take place especially in the middle of the football field. Third down and ten after a couple of throws so. Brian Rock decided he got a 24-yard run off the uh, the read option from Nick Holly and thrown the football on first and second down. Four wide now with Holly offset. Reardon, a lot of time. Now checks down. Ernest Calhoun made the grab. Well, he got drilled, got drilled, but is going to be very, very close to that first down as Calhoun, he made that catch in traffic. <laughs> And Ernest does a nice job of first catching the football, but more importantly, once he gets it, as you see at the end right here, taking it, a lick it and keep on ticking, because you've got to pick up those positive yards and keep the offense on the football field. He did just that. Did pick up the first down as clock's moving. So we're approaching the two-minute mark, but Kent State now in that, that go zone. First and goal now from the nine. This is Holly. Oh, he got tracked down for the backside. Nate Timp again. Made the first hit. Jeremy Timp. Timp also getting some help from James Kelly. I'm going to say, I'll give Kelly that initial contact. Who wears number 43, the defensive end on Nick Holly. And James Kelly right there was a heat sinking missile. That's exactly what you do from the backside. There's no one threatening your containment. Attack the attack to the football, make a play. In the backfield for a tackle for loss. Nice job on the part of Kelly. Get a good look into the 
The eyes of Colin Reardon from the end zone. Reardon going to throw the slam. Pierce got it. Touchdown. Kent State. Casey Pierce. Well executed play on the part of Kent State. And that is the beauty of having a multi-faceted attack on offense. You can run in the football. You sell the run with the play action fake. And you leave your wide receiver tight end, in this case, Casey Pierce, wide open. As you see right there, you're honoring the, the run, but there's someone behind you. Nice job right there. A play call on the part of Brian Rock and execution on the part of his Kent State offense. Kent State taking the lead as Colin Reardon went to work with Casey Pierce. Anthony Melchiori to add his first PAT of the day. He'll do that. Could be huge for Kent State as they respond and take the 13-10 lead on the Colin Reardon to Casey Pierce TD throw. And that was all set up by a, pure, a poor punt on the part of Tardu. You have to do a better job when you're in a special teams game of giving the field position to your offense and defense. That was all set up because it was such a short field. And credit Kent State for taking advantage of it. See right here, Casey Pierce back in zone wide open, and that was all set up because of a nice play action fake on the part of Reardon. And sold that very, very well. So Colin Reardon able to connect with Casey Pierce and of course, Ohio, Gerard and I were right here on opening night, way back on August 30th when Kent State thought they had the football game in hand and got stung by the Josiah Yazdani field goal make for Ohio as you look at Kent State's scoring drive in a minute and 49 seconds. Colin Reardon with his seventh touchdown throw of the year. Casey Pierce with his second TD grab. Chris Carnegie on the Army return from the one. Carnegie got over the 25-yard line and uh, got thrown back. And with just a minute and 23 seconds left, Kent State got uh, the Anthony Murray special team stop. So Army, given the nature of what they do offensively, probably stick to what is good to them. And remember, they do get the football. They defer to start the football game. Army will receive the second half kickoff. Right, and even though you don't expect Army to pass in the situation because they just don't do it, you still cannot afford to allow big chunks of yards to be gained on the part of the Kent State defense. Because you assume run, but it may be pass. Santiago, quarterback draw. Santiago got six as he kept the football. I got a market at the 31 yard line, so give him five and call it second and five with his clock about ready to hit 60 seconds left opening half. Speed option again with that late pitch outside the numbers is well, Army went in, executing beautifully on that is that's 17 yards is. They ran that late pitch and found Tony Giovanelli. And it's a thing of beauty, Michael. And Italiano has to do a much better job of staying outside. As soon as you commit inside, there is someone designed to be outside of you on the part of the Black Knights. Beautiful job of executing that football play on the part of the Black Knights and picking up positive yards. And 17 yards is just as good as a 17 running. It's just as good as a 17-yard passing play. At 55 seconds left, Santiago will run the toss sweep. Going to get the throw back to Santiago, and it was broken up by Nate Holly, who kept spying Santiago and was able to break up that throw from Joe Walker. One thing we know about Nate Holly is that he has excellent closing speed as a tackler, and he shows that ability as well as a pass defender. So this play should have been a big one on the part of the Black Knights, but Nate Holly, because of his great defensive skill set, is able to break up that football play. The brother of Nick Holly, the Twins, 200-pound sophomore, Nate Holly, both of them from Toledo Whitmer High School. Santiago going to take a shot. He wanted Raymond Maples, Nick Cuthbert, Nate Holly in coverage. Had some separation there. 
Yeah, step there. But it goes back to, again, force Army to pass. That's what you want them to do. It's not their strong suit. And if they are able to beat you in the pass, that has to be disheartening for a defense. And it's going to bring up a third down and 10. So if Kent State gets a stop, they're going to get the football back, you would assume. Yeah. And considering how poor it was punted last time, they may like their chances with that. Yeah. Might have a chance to take a shot to put more points up. Well, Santiago had to go up to reel that snap in, and now he's going to just unload. They want interference, this Army sideline. They're going to get interference on Xavier Moss. As that interference is going to be called on Malcolm Pinnell, the senior cornerback from Pickerington, Ohio. Now remember, though, in the college game, that's a 15-yard penalty from the spot of the snap. It's not a spot foul. Pass interference. Defense, number two, 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. And that's a great point, Michael, in that Michael Pinnell has to do a better job of staying with the receiver, not pretty much mugging him in the process. And it, the play was thrown off because of the high snap. And sometimes that works in the favor of the offense as it did right here. But Pinnell has to turn around quicker, and you can't obviously mug the receiver down the football field. Officials are going to call that all day. Uh, Army now, 34 seconds left, so they get the 15 on that Malcolm Pinnell pass interference. Army's got three timeouts left. Nothing else. They could get Daniel Gorchowski in field goal range here. Santiago going to run option, keep the football. Nate Holly popped him along with Matt Dellinger at the 37-yard line. Head coach Jeff Monken wants to take Army's first time out. Timeout number one for Army. So right from here, we look at about 54 yards. And Holly does a solid job of making the play. But what I'd like to see out of Nate is to take Santiago back as opposed to letting his forward momentum get more positive yards. Nate Holly, as you see, two-time MAC East Defensive Player of the Week. That leads the MAC third in the FBS at almost 14 hits per game. And I like those numbers when he's playing strong safety. But when he's back to free safety position and making that many tackles, that's a sign right there that the defense, especially the front seven, are not doing their job. But give the young man credit. He is a heck of a football player, making plays left and right already today. Started on opening night as he had uh, the 18 tackles, forced two fumbles, recovered a fumble uh, against Ohio. Albeit, though, again, Ohio won it on uh, that field goal hit at the gun by Josiah Yazdani. Back to the ground game. With Larry Dixon on the carry. Kent State got Richard Gray riding him down. Now, clock. Now, Army did stop the clock. I thought quickly they were going to line up without calling the T.O., but they got it here. So that's her second. They still have one left. And judging right now, Michael, the way the wind is blowing, you're going to be kicking to a very stiff wind. Yeah. So you're going to need more yards. You're going to have to probably get around about the 15 to 20 yard line in order to have a chance with the way the wind is blowing right now. And Daniel Grokowski, his long on the year was two weeks ago when Ball State's Cardinals from the Mid-American Conference went to West Point. Rochowski hit a 43-yarder two weeks ago. Uh, again, right now here, it would be from 52 yards out. Paul Haynes, again, trying to, so he's got a lot of football to play, and a young man who walked on to this Kent State program in 1987 as a true freshman led the squad in INT. So you know he has pride in building this program, former player. Third down and three, Santiago wanted to put it up, but he got rocked. Sick time, Kent State. Matt Dellinger, Nate Terhune combined with Richard Gray to sack Angel Santiago. It is a great job that they were able to get to Santiago on this play. As you see the blitz coming in a pursuit on the part of Santiago as he gets ready to unload the football, can't throw it because he feels the pressure, but he did have someone wide open in the middle of the football field. Great job right there by the Kent State defense of applying and getting pressure to Santiago. Well, Army has now taken their third and final timeout. But that sack, though, the football back at the 40-yard line, and I, you know, I don't know if they want to uh, 
It'd be 57, 58 yards if they wanted to. And but you pointed out accurately, Gerard, that it's going to be in the would be into the teeth of that 15 mile an hour breeze. Right. And some bad things can happen with that potential block. And it really gets bad for you and goes awry. But on that particular play, Michael Santiago had the receiver open. That bit of hesitation right there cost him a big play. And Paul Haynes uh, and his defensive coordinator, Brian George, got volume defenders in Santiago's face with Teryun and Dellinger and Gray. Uh, it might be the final play of the half on fourth and eight. Santiago is going to load it up and take a shot to the end zone. It was broken up. Broken up by, well, Malka Pinnell was back there as that throw was intended for Xavier Moss. And Kent State was able to break that up. I think initially, and there's a great possibility that Kent State maybe saw Moss get his hands on the football momentarily. All right, so 30 minutes of football in the books. Kent State on that late second quarter touchdown throw from Casey Rear, or rather Colin Rear to Casey Pierce. With a 13-10 halftime lead, when we get back, we'll take a look at Notre Dame quarterback Everett Golson as he and the Irish get ready to tangle with Florida State tonight in a battle of unbeatens. Reardon hit Pierce late second. Kent State with a 13-10 lead. Colors changing, leaves uh, showing all of their splendor. Mid-Saturday, mid-October Saturday of college football. Kent State with a 13-10 lead over Army with Gerard Cherry. I'm Michael Regai, all of our ESPN college football crew. Let's uh, take a look at Kent State's drive charts by the numbers of here. Five possessions of the football, Gerard. Only had the one play in the rear pick to start the football game today, but then three of their next four possessions put the 13 points on the board. And what's really encouraging for Kent State is the plays on those scoring drives, 11 plays, 13 plays, 6 plays. And that shows signs that the offense is starting to formulate ability to move the football up and down the field. Kent's a great time of possession on the part of the Golden Flashes. You're going to have to keep that intact. One thing that we do know is you allow the Black Knights to stay on the football field. They're going to pick up yards and amass a lot of it and probably score and win the game. So you have to do a great job and continue what you did at the Kent State by playing effectively on offense, by staying on the football field. Absolutely, and that's something they've accented. All right, now what about Kent State when they hold the lead the last three years? Spotless, a perfect 13-0. On the flip side of that, shows what the bottom line has been, just one win. Yeah, that's polarity at its best. <laughs> it's fine at the same time. And interesting enough, for the Black Knights, last time they won a away game was actually here at this stadium. So we got a bunch of things working in each other's favor and against at the same time for both these opposing squads. No catch state forced to go all year long without Treyon Durham. Treyon Durham, surgery on the foot. Now he's a senior and of course one of the Top running backs in Kent State history, a thousand yard rusher two years ago. And of course, as we talked to Paul Haynes this week, Haynes said we'll have to wait and see. A lot can happen between now and uh, next spring practice, whether or not Durham wants to. He's got another year as he played four years in a row. An Angel Santiago, this is what he's done in the opening half. It was 85 total yards, he's had 73 in the ground. And Santiago. Santiago will bring the offense out in a moment. That's Josh Jenkins, who's been so stellar at the corner on this kickoff return. And Jenkins from the goal line. And Jenkins got bumped as he hit the 20-yard line. As Kent State able to make that stop for Kent State was a jock, or rather uh, Marcus Elliott. Elliott played special teams, a true freshman. So here's Angel Santiago. You got a pair of threes. Jenkins on defense. Angel Santiago on the offensive side. Now, 
Angel Santiago. Starts that triple option. How about the defensive play from Richard Gray on the takedown of Santiago? And that's exactly what you want to do, opening play, if you're on the defensive side, is force Army into a negative situation. And Santiago, you could tell the timing was thrown off on this play, and that bit of timing caused him to get actually behind the, his halfback and trail him, and you can't pitch to someone who's in front of you. Nice job on the part of Kent State. Fifth-year senior Richard Gray playing his final season. You see his numbers out of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and so many down through the years. Kent State golden flashes have come from Western PA. A timeout and a stoppage of play now. We're going to try to ascertain if one of the football teams called the timeout. Darius Redmond appears to be shaking up a little bit, Michael, on that play. Yeah, Redmond, all right. Redmond there, we see Redmond now. He is being assisted. There's Darius, the sophomore out of Miami, Florida. Richard Gray forcing his way through to get that three-yard tackle for loss on Santiago. And that's so huge because you put the Black Knights in a situation where they don't like to be. That's facing a second-and-long situation, which may lead to a third-long situation, which they may have to pass the football, and as we are aware, that's not their strong suit. Well, not their forte. They do have a couple of big receivers in Edgar Poe at 6'4". And Xavier Moss, but look at Kent State's D again. Rally to the football and making that hit from the linebacking spot. Second year redshirt freshman, Dustin Moore. And Moore and company do an excellent job fanning out the play, not allowing Santiago to get a running lane. That's the key part right there. No running lanes for Santiago to go to to turn the ball up the field. Dustin Moore. Stockbridge, Georgia. So Richard Gray, three-yard tackle for loss on the Arby's first snap. Dustin Moore, two-yard tackle for loss. Third and 15 for Angel Santiago. That's a pass that's complete. That shovel pass that he comes underneath with to Raymond Maples. Maples got knocked down by Nate Vance, the, the fifth-year senior. Nice three-and-out stop, Kent State. And outside of scooping and scoring or creating a turnover situation, you could not have played that series any better than what the Kent State Golden Flashes did just right there, Michael, on the defensive pitch. You gotta love that if you're defensive coordinator Brian George. That football is free, and Kent State is gonna come up as Ernest Calhoun rocks that Army punter, Alex Tardo, and Calhoun is gonna set Kent State up a tremendous operating position at the eight-yard line. I guess I spoke too soon. <laughs> I'll have a, a tackle for a loss in the punting situation and just a poor snapping of the football on the part of the Black Knights. And it appears to me that they're still in the locker room mentally because they're not showing up physically and with the game already underway. Great job of being alert on the part of the Golden Flashes. Give credit to Ernest Calhoun for making that play. You talk about playing on a short football field. Colin Reardon in his offense, first and goal from the eight-yard line. Off that play fake, Reardon. Well over the head, back corner of the end zone of Chris Humphrey. And one thing Colin's going to have to do, Michael, be smarter with the football. Yes, he threw it away, but he had open receivers. You have to survey the football field. You can't be a quarterback that stares down your receivers because when you do that, that's just a sign to the defensive backs that you're not looking and I can be aggressive on how I attack and approach playing my pass coverage. Sure. Look at Ernest Calhoun, young man who grew up about 12 miles from this campus in Akron, Ohio. The second a goal from the eight. Reardon. Look at end zone. Triggers the out. It is caught. Touchdown, Chris Humphrey. And this time you see Ritter looks to one side of football field and goes the opposite direction. That helps out the receivers. 
And Humphreys does a nice job of first catching the football, doing a nice spin move to get into the end zone. Now Chris Humphrey, and now will a kneel at the 10-yard line to hold on the Anthony Melchiori PAT. Melchiori will line drive that through the sticks, and all of a sudden, the Kent State Golden flashes momentum on a homecoming Saturday. A couple of touchdown throws in the last two drives. Colin Reard, look at the look away, and then come back to that pylon to Chris Humphrey. Kent State's lead is 10. Push-ups for points. Kent State Golden flashes with the 20 of them on the board today, being helped out by the Army Corps of Cadets. Colin Reardon has had an, he threw a pick on his first throw of the afternoon, but since then he's been locked in. Yes, he has, but couldn't figure out a worse way or find a worse way to start a game. But since then, Reardon has been on board and in touch with his receivers as he spread the rock convincingly today, finding a multi multiple receivers in his effort to put up points and meaningful yards for his offense. Melchiori off the approach to hang that high. Chris Carnegie got knife down. Boy, don't you like, look at a senior just caught the touchdown pass. Chris Humphrey gunning his way down on the kick cover unit. Yeah, that's not an accident. That's how you get to the next level. If you're an unheralded player, you know what? If you can play special teams and you can catch the football and score points, there are people in the National Football League that are looking at you and want that on their football team. What a point you make and how one of, one of the very best in the National Football League played quarterback right here at Kent State, Julian Edelman. Started for Bill Belichick in New England, special teams guy. Now he's Tom Brady's top receiver. He can go back further with that with Josh Cribbs. Yep, no question about it. And running that, that toss sweep army on this first play after they got stunned off their first series. That's Tony Giovanelli who got 11. Giovanelli doesn't see the football a lot, but like everybody else in the Army camouflage, when he catches it, when he runs it, over five yards of carry. Yeah, that seems to be the issue for Army. They have too many playmakers, and they say, well, why is that a problem? You don't know what to do with the guys. You're not consistent with what you're calling because you're trying to get everyone involved. This is Larry Dixon trying to power his way off that left side of his offensive line. Nate Holly came up in that strong safety spot. Just, just keep your eyes, folks, on number 18 in that blue Kent State jersey. He's always around the football. Exactly. If you want to know where the would-be <laughs> tackler is at, find number 18 because he's going to lead you to the football, be it in the air or on the ground. Very impressive young man. Paul Haynes, as we showed you, walked on to this Kent State program in 1987, became a two-time All-Mac performer. Angel Santiago got popped. What a play off the corner for Kent State. As making that hit is Demetrius Monday, the redshirt freshman, and Jordan Italiano. And give credit to Brian George because he did something at halftime, Michael. And you see right here, since the halftime, it's been nothing but Kent State in the backfield shutting down this Black Knights attack. Nothing's a go of late because of the justice made at halftime. So give credit to Brian George for getting his guys in the right position to make plays. Jordan Italiano there, Santiago on the edge with that late pitch to Giovanelli. He's inside the 30 and finally got bumped out of bounds on maybe a Kent State touchdown saving tackle from the sophomore Carrick Roan, 38 yards for Tony Giovanelli. As soon as you give praise to this Kent State defense for doing a great job of containment and playing sound defense, what do they do? No containment, leads to a big play, an excellent read on the part of Santiago, and Giovanelli does a nice job of getting down the football field, picking up positive yards, but you gotta keep contained. I don't care if you're playing against the option or pitch play. This is Larry Dixon on uh, the front end of that, that read option, and Dixon will power his way inside the 20 to the 19, so give him six. Second and four. Isn't that amazing, Michael? As soon as you give someone credit, bam. <laughs> That's the nature of this, this triple option attack as you look at head coach Jeff Monken in his first year at West Point. There it is. We've amplified it so much for you today. Third in the nation. Toss sweep. 
Maples, Raymond Maples, got a terrific block as he rolled inside the 10. He got a real nice block from the freshman, Mike Houghton, right there, number 57. You know what you're starting to see out of the Black Knights' offensive attack, especially to the outside, is that they have more blockers than Kent State has defenders, creating running lanes for Maple to pick up positive yards. You got to close down those lanes, and you got to get upfield if you're Golden Flashes on a defensive end. And look at Houghton. Go down and clip Nick Cuthbert. And that key block. First and goal from the nine. Santiago. Uh-uh. Nothing there. Nothing there. As that was shut off. By Zach Singer. The 310 pounder. Number 98. Got some help as well. First time today that uh, we've called Jonte Bird. Bird wears number 56. Right there next to Singer. Jonte Bird started the year as a backup, but getting a lot more reps in playing time. Second and goal from the nine. Giovanelli got a block on the corner. Touchdown, Tony Giovanelli. What a terrific block by Terry Baggett to usher him to the corner of the end zone. And nothing advanced or difficult on the part of this play, Michael. It really boils down to staying outside and keeping containment. And when you do not do that, the Army will expose you. And they did just there. Nice job again on the part of Santiago of recognizing the deficiency in the defense. And then Giovanelli making the play. But that's all set up by an excellent block on the part of the wide receiver out front making the play to help his teammate get into the end zone. Uh, Terry Baggett threw that terrific block on the corner as he cut down Demetrius Monday. The point after, bang through by Daniel Grochowski. We've got a good one going on here, folks. Don't go anywhere in a chilly, rainy Saturday afternoon inside Dick Stadium. Bang it with a big block. Tony Giovanelli to the house. And State's lead, shave the three. Rain falling here inside Dick Stadium hasn't dampened the enthusiasm of a uh, terrific homecoming crowd. Trying to see if their Kent State flashes could win for the first time this year. 2017 with an Army touchdown drive after a poor first possession was uh, pretty strong. Well, this is the the pitch there that got him going with Tony Giovanelli. And it was all Giovanelli on his drive as he scored a touchdown as well. Ernest Calhoun with speed. Calhoun, nice return to the 30-yard line. Ernest Calhoun. The uh, very quick five foot six inch running back out of Miami, Florida. And Calhoun was very close to breaking that one for even longer distance, Michael. He did exactly what you're taught to do hit the hole, see the hole. Gio Vanilla had a large part. He had that, that big run as he tight roped here this near sideline, then finished it off with the TD. Colin Reardon's got to go back to work that what was 10 point lead now down to three. It's imperative that we're in protects the football. Don't force the issue. Out of the pistol with Nick Holly behind him. And this is Nick Holly. Oh, look at that Army defensive front four getting real stout. As for the Black Knights coming up and making that hit from the safety spot for Army. It's uh, Ryan England. We've talked about England a lot today. This is the type of picture that you want to put in your yearbook for us how to play defense up front as there was a swarm of army camouflage jerseys on the scene preventing Holly from getting any positive yards. England making that stop as he stood up Holly in the hole. No game, second and ten, Kent State. Reardon going to throw the seam and he almost had that picked off. Very dangerous Chris Carnegie was looking for the INT. Casey Pierce, did he have separation? No, he did not. The reason why he did not have separation is because you had a defender sitting back in the middle of the football field, and there was no way you should not have thrown this football. Very fortunate it was not picked off. You're bracketed. Matter of fact, you said a three minute in a room of operation for the Black Knights that could have made a play on that football. You're right, as uh, Ryan England was coming over from uh, his strong safety spot. Oh, look at Kent State. Just 16% on third and 10. Rear drilling that throw. It is caught. Chris Humphrey. 
He ran that in route and Reardon delivered a rope to Humphrey. Big play on third and ten. And a great job of bouncing back on the part of Reardon. Made a poor decision earlier in this drive and comes right back to his go-to receiver, Chris Humphreys, as they connect. Nice job allowing his receiver to run with the football in hand. Run after catch. Impressive job on the part of Reardon and Humphrey connecting right there, Michael. Yeah, Chris Humphrey having a very nice day. Caught that touchdown pass in the last Kent State drive. Back to the ground game. This is Nick Holly. It's going to come back. Holly got rode down as uh, he made that cut. It was taken down uh, by Army's Luke uh, Prohl, but it's coming back. And you don't want you guys to play tentatively. But one of the things that you have to be aware of is if your offense is struggling with converting first downs, you have to play smart football and not create those type of plays in which you're going to get called for an infraction. Now the chances and likelihood of you moving down the football field become almost remote on the part of Kent State. Luke Crew made the stop. But it cost Kent State, and they're looking at first and 20 now on that penalty on Wayne Scott. Reardon came underneath. Really nowhere to go there. As in coverage with tight end Casey Pierce was that outside linebacker Jeremy Timpf, who's been very good today for Army defensively. Casey Pierce was looking for the pass interference call, but Reardon has to throw a more catchable ball for an official to even honor the idea of throwing a flag on that particular play. Kent State trying to add to their three-point advantage. More importantly, trying to find their first football win of this 2014 season. Second and 20. Colin Reardon with three wide. Being chased by Tim. Came underneath the James Brooks made the grab. Then put the football on the ground, but it was after. It was after he was ruled down. So Brooks made the grab. Brooks made the grab, but Tiff made the tackle. And Reardon does a good job of getting outside the pocket, coming back to the ball as Brooks, trying to pick up positive yards. Look at the closing speed of Tiff right there. That's what's called coming through with the <laughs> mean intentions and bad business right there. Heck of a football player, too. Yeah, he is. Steven Riccardi came up with that football, but again, you heard the ruling that it was ruled down and play finished. Now here's Kent State once again. Now today they're five of eight. Reardon's got to pick up a big one here. That throw was hauled in on the outcut by James Brooks, but it's going to come up a good five yards shy on that uh, that third down and 14. And the teacher receivers to go to the sticks, but obviously in this case, Brooks was nowhere near the sticks. You got to run that route deeper if you want to pick up a first down. Now you put your offense in a fourth and manageable situation, which is better than nothing. What is offensive coordinator? Brian Rock dial up right here after Brooks made that catch for nine. The line to make is a 29-yard line of Army. Fourth and five. Reardon threw it a seam. He picked up that first down. James Brooks. Boy, Gerard, he kind of arrowed that back toward the middle, and Reardon found him first down. Kent State. And great concentration by Brooks. Coming back to the football and then rearing him for putting the ball in a position where Brooks could actually make a play on that particular pass. Six catch, 62 yards for James Brooks today. Colin Reardon now having one of his best days of the year. 18 to 28, 207 yards, a couple of TDs to one pick. And he has catch state on the move. Reardon bubble screen. Josh Boyle made the grab, and Boyle's going to step out of bounds in front of Timp at the 15-yard line. That's very close to another Kent State first down. Move the sticks. They did get the 10. And that's exactly what you want to do with your offensive coordinator, Brian Rock. Give the ball to your playmakers. Give them an opportunity to get their hands on the ball, set them in a position to do just that, make plays down the field, because you do have the advantage from a skill set standpoint and athletic ability with your receiving core versus this defense for the Black Knights. Army trying to uh, 
finish off this uh, Kent State rather try to finish off this drive against Army's defense. Red zone time now with the football. We're going to get a timeout. All right, Kent State with a play clock running down. All right, let's take it with head coach Paul Haynes. Kent State in the red zone. The football, the 14 yard line, trying to add to their three point lead. Michael Rickard, Gerard Cherry, all of our terrific ESPN College football crew. Good one going on in Dick Stadium, homecoming Saturday on the campus of Kent State University. Golden Flash is on the move. First to 10 from Army's 14 yard line with a three point lead, trying to add to it. Reardon going to come middle. Casey Pierce made the grab, but he was surrounded. And making that Army stop is Ryan England. Reardon found Pierce in a lot of, a lot of traffic. Yeah, and give credit to Casey Pierce for catching this football because he knew he was going to get hit, and you see it right here. Catch the football, expect to get hit, especially when you have temp breathing and company breathing down your back. The Reardon-Pierce hookup got five, so second down and five now. As we're under five minutes left at quarter number three. Play clock at three. Reardon going to show, throw that back shoulder fade to the corner, and Chris Humphrey wasn't able to haul it in. One of the hardest, if not the hardest, play to defend from a defensive back standpoint. Just a little bit off on the on the location of the football, but excellent play call in that it was almost a completion. But you got to get that ball up just a tad bit higher if you're Colin Reardon and you're trying to connect with Chris Humphreys. This is the 11th play of the drive. That's uh, over four minutes in duration now. On third and five, uh, Chris Humphrey going to come off the football field. And now Colin Reardon, it looked like there was some confusion with that Kent State personnel group as they ran James Brooks and also Charles Chandler a third year sophomore into that particular personnel package. Those are the type of home of play, but situations in which you have to eliminate. You're in a very tightly contested game. Can't afford to burn timeouts, especially in the red zone area. Have to be succinct and disciplined. Jeff Monken and his Army defense, I mean, uh, their forte is running the football and running it top five best in the nation out of their triple option. Defensively, it, Gerard, honestly, it's it's been a rough go pretty much most of the year for Army on that side of the football. And you, you think about it, they're facing spread offenses and empty backfield looks. And that's not something that they, they certainly don't see that in practice at all. No, they don't. That's an excellent point, Michael, in that it, the, the defense is used to seeing the run. So if you want to ask them, to stop the option, I'm pretty sure they're experts at that. <laughs> yeah, but you dealing think with so. <laughs> spread offenses and just a pro style attack is not what they're used to seeing at all. Well, Kent State took that time out. This is a third down and five line to make at the five yard line. Reardon came underneath and it was dropped. Well, Casey Pierce had that short crossing route in his hands and now field goal time with Anthony Melchiori. Even if he had caught the ball, Michael, though, he's not going to pick up a first down. And if you're going to run a crossing route, typically you have someone in front. That would be the first level with Pierce and then someone behind him in order to lure up a defense so you can go for the end zone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, Melchiori, remember the holder is wide out Chris Humphrey. This is going to be a 27-yard attempt from straight on the sticks. Plenty of distance, a lot of leg. Anthony Melchiori has connected again for the third time today. So Anthony Melchiori will bump the Kent State lead up to six again at 23-17. Happy to have the three points. You know in your heart it should be six. They had taken it, Kent State had. They'd gotten on their last two possessions, the final one of the second quarter, the first possession of the third, the, the touchdown throws. Colin Reardon uh, first to Casey Pierce and then to Chris Humphrey, but 
Well, that drive, uh, you know that. Paul Hayes was looking to put seven on the board there that could have bumped the lead back up to 10 again. And it also appears that if they don't establish a run game, they go away from the play action pass, which makes sense too, because if you haven't established a run, who's going to honor the play action? Gerard, you, they, they've pretty much gone away from the run now. Have they not? Kent State today as we take a look at the scoring drive here. Yeah, they've gotten away from it, and that set up the passing game early. You got 12 plays, 61 yards, and the time of possession is huge because you want to keep Army off the football field. But at some point, a tight game like this, you got to get seven as opposed to three. All right, Melchiori to boot it away. Josh Jenkins from the six with a lot of speed at his disposal, but couldn't get going there. Well, Kent State special teams unit on that kick cover has been doing a solid job today against Josh Jenkins and Chris Carnegie. Yes, they have totally corralled two returners for the Black Knights. And you like the aggressiveness and play that they're showing down there. This is all about field position in these football games. You want the Black Knights to have to drive a very long distance in order to try to score. So Angel Santiago back on the football field once again. Santiago, who again last week, what was a disappointing loss at West Point against Rice, ran for better than 100 yards. Santiago with the football here. Well, he made that decision to keep the football, and he ran right in to Nate Holly Again, Holly came up from that, uh, that strong safety spot and delivered a lick. Yes, he did. And the beauty of the play was Nate Holly was disciplined. He did not get outside. He stayed at home, and he forced... And this is what you want to do. Watch right here. Nate Holly forces Santiago to make a decision as opposed to Santiago making a decision based off of the alignment of Holly. Excellent job by Nate Holly. A second and six. Go back to the 240-pound bulldozer, Larry Dixon. Dixon got a couple. And it's going to bring up Army at a third and a long one. Kent State's defense. You see right there, big John Cunningham, true freshman. His coaching staff loves Cunningham, the true freshman out of Bedford High School right here in the Cleveland area. Third and one. Santiago got to keep the football. Got enough as he got that surge behind center Matt Eugenberg. Eugenberg moved to center this year, 310 pound junior. He's the best of the bunch on that Army O line. Yeah, just enough surge. They had to earn that one yard, and that's exactly what you're going to have to do to this Army offense if you're the Kent State Golden Flash. It's make them earn it. Don't give up the easy big chunk plays. Jeff Monken, after so much success, taking his Georgia Southern FCS squad to the national semifinals three years in a row. Well, Santiago put the football on the ground. Kent State says they have the football. Who's coming out of there with it? Bottom of that pile. Matt Eugenberg, the Army center that we just mentioned, is uh, the leader in the, the bell cow of that offensive line, came up with that errant snap. Yeah, and considering how wet it's been this afternoon, Michael, and on top of that, we saw fumble exchanges during the course of pregame warm-ups. So I'm not surprised that we saw a fumble snap on the part of this Army offense. That's not Santiago, though. It looked like Eugenberg had got that back cleanly to him. It's always a quarterback's fault. Yeah, second and ten. Gio Vanella outside the numbers on that late pitch. Oh, and Nick Cuthbert. How about Cuthbert with that four tackle as he drove Gio Vanella to the ground, didn't let him turn the corner. And that's the key part. Had enough speed to close so that Gio Vanelli could not get outside and turn up the football field. But if you're Italiano as he trails, you still got to establish that sideline because right there you got bailed out on the part of Cuthbert. Tony Giovanelli, who had those two big plays on option pitches for the touchdown on the last Army drive. That misdirection, and Terry Baggett got popped by Nate Holly, stepping up into a gap and taking Baggett to the ground. <laughs> Penetration from the defense cures all ills. When you have someone in the backfield, and it's all you need. Now it's shut down anything. I'm not surprised Nate Holly is a personal attacker. 
He could be the Mac East Defensive Player of the Week every week. Every week. Just every week. Nate Holly, and he's always up for the award every week. Double digit tackles every week. Ten more today. Big stop there. Tardo, the hang it high. Brooks for the 16. Nowhere to go. James Brooks taken down. Oh, the Holly Twins, just sophomores out of Toledo Whitmer High School. Nate's twin brother Nick came to Kent State as a quarterback, now has become the top of the depth chart on the running back side. And wasn't initially recruited by Kent State. At the last minute, the scholarship came open, and that's how they got him on the football field. I'm sure they are happy, Paul Haynes and company, that they were able to get that open scholarship. No doubt about that, the Holly family now very, very prominent, the sophomores. Now Colin Reardon, six-point lead now. Reardon going to run that read option. First down carry through a crease. First time today for Kent State. Miles Hippler, the true freshman on the carry. If you're defensive coordinator for Army, Jay Bateman, you are going nuts right now because you're saying, so how do we get beat by an option play? 17 yards for Miles Hibbler. First tote of the day. Hibbler, the true freshman for head coach Paul Haynes. 190 pounder. Reardon will keep the football. Excellent move, second level and more. Colin Reardon pushed out of bounds at the 45 yard line of Army. That's 24 yards. He showed pass off that initial play fake. <laughs> he certainly did, Michael. And what you like about Reardon's game is that he has the ability to run the football. There's nothing there. Make a guy miss. And it should have been dead to rights in the backfield, but Colin shows you his athletic ability his, and also his gutsiness. So again, he's operating with a bad ankle, and you couldn't tell in that play right there. Josh Jenkins got him out of bounds. Jenkins, the Army cornerback, who's had a stellar afternoon. And this is going to take us to the end of the third quarter. So the Kent State Golden Flashes with a six-point lead after three, trying to win their first of the year. Come on back and find out if that's reality or the Army Black Knights have other ideas. Chris Humphrey with the third quarter touchdown catch. 23-17, Kent State when we get back. There you see it by the number through 45 minutes of football. Kent State with a Colin Reardon touchdown throw to Chris Humphrey in the Anthony Melchiori field goal. Countered the Tony uh, Giovanelli Army touchdown run. Gerard, uh, this has been fun today. Good football game. Yeah, both teams have had their opportunities and are taking advantage of them. Very competitive game. Got to be happy with them both sides of how they play on the offensive end, taking advantage of their opportunities in the process. All right, 15 minutes to decide it. Possibly. Blitz coming. Reardon going to take a shot outside the numbers, and that catch was made as he was able to hit Chris White, who hauled it in. Again, double move, but throw over the corner in front of the safety to complete it. And as you watch this play unfold, you got the protection from the lineman. But what Reardon does is looks off the defender, and he finds Chris right there in the seam in that area I should say between the boundary and the numbers in that open spot playing a cover two coverage that's one of the weaknesses of that area well, Colin Reardon on this first play of the fourth quarter now we do have uh, an army uh, defensive player down not able to get an ID as of yet now it might be Chris Carnegie but let's not speculate any further. It is Carnegie now as he rolls over number 14 for Army. And Chris came up and made the tackle on White. And as we said before, Chris White is a big young man. And he's definitely a load to bring down. He hit him flush. Typically, that's a sign of a stinger. And hopefully, there's nothing more and more serious than that. Well, Colin Reardon continues to impress Kent State quarterback as we look at Chris Carnegie. 
hopeful of getting to his feet as he's assisted by the Army Black Knights medical staff. Colin Reardon just hit his 21st throw of the day. 21 of 33 for Reardon on the afternoon now for 242 yards and a couple of touchdowns and uh, Gerard it has been one of the sophomore quarterbacks more effective days here as uh, Kent State plays their seventh game of the season. Right. We really need this opportunity to get back on track because this uh, understatement to say they struggle on the offensive end especially passing the football. And he's shown signs that they have a guy that's a, a winner because most people will pack their bags and say you know what it's not going to happen we're 0 6 but to his credit he's played injured and he's played efficiently effectively and we considered he started the game off with the INT yeah. the young man has not let that hold him back I'm very impressed with that and no question about it because you know Kent State's run game today it does show 91 yards but I mean think about it 17 of those just came on that that last carry first carry of the day from Miles Hibbler the true freshman so it's been pretty much through the air today. Yeah, it has been porous the running attack. It has been able to help, however, establish a play action pass when they have been able to run the football. But for the most part, it has been on the arms of Reardon that the success has been done on the offensive end for the Golden Flashes. All right, first to 10 now for the 25 off play action. Reardon on that throwback on the misdirection. Nick Holly with the catch. Powers inside the 15. He's got a Kent State first down. And Nick Holly shows you his elusive ability to escape the first would be tackler. This is what you like right here. Make the first guy miss. That's what you have to do as a, as a runner, especially a running back. When you get the ball in your hand, make him miss. How good is that, that misdirection today off that throwback? When Reardon waggles out one way and then comes back to the toward the other boundary, got ten there. Go back to the ground game. Nick Holly, it's going to come back. That's going to come back as uh, that is going to be a hold as Holly tried to isolate the middle. Ten yard penalty, two first down. And Michael, that's the second time today that Wayne Scott has had that infraction. At some point, Wayne, even though he's a sophomore, has to get the memo that you are killing your offensive production, your football team, especially in a tight game like this with those type of plays. When you're a repeat offender, that shows a lack of discipline more than anything else. Yeah, Wayne Scott, who has you know, five starts. He started the year at the left guard spot, and then they moved him over to the right side, as Gerard said. Just a sophomore, 320 pounder. Kent State, a perfect five for five in the red zone today. The two touchdowns and the three field goals. They started this drive in the red zone. Quarterback draw. Well, Reardon's in a lot of trouble. In a lot of trouble. And he's going to get uh, taken to the ground. I completely understand why you run that play because you've had success throughout the course of this game with Reardon running the football, but we can't forget. He's operating on a bum ankle. It's not at his <laughs> strength right now to run the football, and you dodged a bullet right there, and we're not getting injured and not getting an even greater loss on that play. All right, Jeremy Timp, there's Timp. We called his name a lot today. Three interceptions on the year to lead Army, one of their leading tacklers. He forced Reardon to turn that back inside. Now second at 23. Reardon on the roll right. And a throw end zone. He wanted Nick Holly, rather Chris Humphrey. He had uh, Holly running uh, on that level route at about the five, and he opted for Humphrey in the corner of the end zone. And that was a sign of inexperience on the part of the Golden Flashes in that when you have your quarterback running around the backfield, separate from the defense. Don't stay in one spot. You had Chris White do that. You had another receiver on the football field for the Golden Flashes do that create space because it was a, it was there for the taking because no one was in the middle of the football field and now it's going to bring up a third down at 23 well they were in the red zone before the Wayne Scott penalty pushed them back and as mentioned they had been a perfect five for five today third 23 got to get a chunk play here Reardon will throw the football that's caught by Chris White. White made the grab at the 15-yard line, but 
That just got him back to about the original line of scrimmage. Yeah, White makes an exceptional catch. He's working with little real estate, gets the foot down, and heck, that's a pro level catch. Both feet were down. Very impressive effort on the part of White. You credit to Reardon for putting the ball in his place, but White could make a play on it. For the fourth time today, Anthony Melchiori. This will be for 32 yards from the left hash. He's a perfect three for three. Make him a perfect four for four. Anthony Melchiori, 32 yard connect from that left hash. The lead is up to nine, and more importantly, a two possession lead now for Kent State. All right, we'll come back and see what Army has in response. Don't go away. Kent State up by nine at 26 17. 26-17, Kent State on a homecoming Saturday. They've outscored Army 13-7 here in the second half. Kent State has had tremendous defensive play, as always, from their safety, Nate Holly. Yes, Nate Holly is the man. You see that tackle right there, Michael. That's picture perfect of how you play the option and that you not give the quarterback a two-way go. Force him to make a decision. A lot, a lot of football to be played here, though, as Nate Holly getting set to go with uh, that helmet as he paces the sidelines. Five of his ten tackles have been solos today, and this is Josh Jenkins from the one. Jenkins to the 30-yard line. A strong return of 30 yards for Josh Jenkins, and that'll allow Angel Santiago and this Army offense to see what they can do about taking a bite out of this nine-point Kent State lead. And they got a great setup on the effort of Jenkins right there to put him in a good position because for the most part today, Golden Flashes have done an excellent job on kick kickoff coverage, tackling behind the 20-yard line or right within that range. Don't go anywhere now. As you look at Anthony Melchiori, who's a perfect four for four on Kent State field goal makes today after he just hit from 32 yards away. Angel Santiago in the Army offense. Off that that triple option. And they'll give the football to big Larry Dixon. Dixon got off to a huge start in the first possession of the game. 240 pounder, but hasn't been featured as uh, much as Tony Giovanelli has here of late. And that has to give credit and lead to the idea that the defensive line, the interior of the defensive line with Carpenter and company, the Golden Flash are doing a good job because they have gotten away from one of their bigger playmakers in Dixon. 14 carries, 69 yards. Santiago, late pitch, Gio Vanelli. First down, look at Gio Vanelli with strength. Carry Kent State tacklers to the midfield stripe. Give them 15 yards for Tony Gio Vanelli. Well, how about off that first read there, Gerard, and then that late pitch? And the key part is that you see Holly read in on Santiago. Someone has to be outside, Michael. If there's no one there, Santiago is coached to pitch the football to get positive yards, and that's exactly what took place. Well, excellent analysis from our Gerard Cherry. One of the principles is about numbers. We'll get into that more in a second. Santiago's going to take a shot for Gio Vanelli. And the football was over that outside shoulder. If it had been inside, they had something big. Exactly, and that's where it becomes problematic for this offensive attack for the Black Knights in that they're not used to throwing the football. And this is a hard pass to complete when you are throwing at a greater range of 50-50 offense of run and pass. So right there, not surprised by the incomplete play, but you had a guy, an opportunity right there wide open. Santiago has to do a better job with that football. Gerard, I'm gonna, we're going to go back after this second out play and just discuss numbers in option football when you try to defend it. Santiago on the move. Late pitch again. Walker. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line, Joe Walker. It's about numbers when you try to defend an option. And what you see right now is that Black Knights have more men outside than the Golden Flashes are bringing to the table. They're going to have to change this attack. Because just leaving Nate Holly out there alone is not enough. One man can't do it. You have to have two or three more defenders out there to shut down that outside pitch if you're going to hope to contain this Black Knights running game. 276 yards rushing now. Go back to the ground game again. 
As that first part of the uh, the triple option, that dive play to Larry Dixon. 15th carry of the day for Dixon, but they've really spread it around. They come into Dick Stadium today, the Army Black Knights averaging 323 yards per game on the ground, and they're approaching the 300-yard mark now with 10 minutes to go. Dixon again. He got snowed under this time. Richard Gray along on a hit. Also on that stop, Big Chad Singer. And that freshman linebacker, Dustin Moore. There's Moore who made the big tackle for He's getting more playing time now. And we haven't seen LC Refuge, who was eligible to play in the second half today, but haven't seen him. You know, Dustin keeps making plays like that. You won't see LC. The key part is making plays. All right, third down and six. Line to make at the 29 of Kent State for Angel Santiago. Santiago went to Dixon again, and that Kent State stout defensive front got him on the ground. Richard Gray getting up off the, the bottom of that, along with Nate Vance. And interesting enough, Michael, that Black Knights have decided to go to the interior run game, which has, for the most part, been shut down in the second half. All the successes come with the outside pitch plays. So this is a fourth down and three, and trailing by nine as we just come inside nine minutes to play. Head coach Jeff Monken and Army going to try to move the sticks. Fourth and three. Santiago, Gio Vanelli. He didn't get there. Kent State came up with a stop. Dustin Moore on the first hit had some help from Nick Cuthbert. Kent State with a big stop. <laughs> and the key to this play being successful on defensive end for Kent State was that Nate Holly forced the issue early on. Typically, you tell a defender don't blitz, but by Holly getting in there, it forced Santiago to pitch the ball sooner than he would have liked to have pitched it. Therefore, that gave the rest of the Kent State defenders the chance to corral to the football, therefore shutting them down, turn the ball over to their offense. Great job of team defense on the part of the Kent State Golden Flashes. Malcolm Pinnell also went on that hit with the redshirt fresh with Dustin Moore. So Kent State uh, feeling a little vibe now. Inside nine minutes left, they get a fourth down stop at their own 31-yard line, and back they come offensively. Back to the ground game, but just nothing there. Boy, absolutely nothing there for Anthony Murray. And Jay Bateman had the perfect defensive play call on that play by blitzing his interior linebackers and outside guys to make a stop on that play. So interesting that head coach Paul Haynes and offensive coordinator Brian Rock going to go to Anthony Murray now in uh, this series of downs. Murray, the senior. He's offset on second and 12. Reardon. Came underneath, deflected into the hands of James Brooks. Brooks was speed on that boundary and got pushed out of bounds. A fortuitous deflection off the hands of Casey Pierce and caught by James Brooks. You call it fortuitous? I call it living right. Because that <laughs> should have been an interception, no doubt. Aren't they one and the same? That they are. Because <laughs> this should have been an interception of Paul Collar Weird and Casey Pierce has it slipped through his hands. You've got to catch this ball if you Pierce. But right there, Johnny on the spot. James Brooks picks up the ball, sprints down the sideline. Great play, and hey, fortuitous is what it is. <laughs> Or living right. Or living right. 46 yards worth of fortuitous living right <laughs> for the Kent State Golden Flashes. Murray on the carry. Anthony Murray still alive. Slipped a couple of tackles. That's five. I mean, five tough yards of running for Anthony Murray. And that's what you love about those type of runners, Michael and Murray's mentality you're not going to bring me down it's going to take the whole squad in order for me to get down the football field and that type of effort that type of approach if it can be passed along to the rest of this Kent State football team is what's going to require for you to change the fortunes of your season how about the day for James Brooks you just saw it seven catches 108 yards that one for 46 off the deflection and Anthony Murray the senior out of Spanaway Washington 
at the running back on this series of downs. Reard triggers the out. He's got Humphrey. Good move on that boundary inside the 10. It pushed out of bounds at the five yard line. 15 yard hookup. Reardon, Chris Humphrey. And until the Black Knights prove that they can tackle, you keep on putting these isolation plays out there where you force the secondary to make a one on one tackle. And so far today, Chris Humphrey has had his way with the DBs for the Black Knights. Now catch state. Thinking about up by nine. Clock moving towards six minutes left. Thinking about seven that might put this one away for them. I don't think they have the luxury to ever think that, Michael. <laughs> Reardon got an end zone. It is caught. Casey Pierce. Touchdown. Second of the day. Pierce. Kent State. <laughs> And this time, Casey Pierce said, I will hold on to the football. He catches the ball in traffic, takes the punch in the process. But you like the fact that Casey Pierce, a senior leader on this football team, takes the hit, completes the play, touchdown, putting his team in a much better position to win this football. Well, Casey Pierce with his second touchdown catch today. Wow, as Colin Reardon spread it around. Chris Humphrey, James Brooks, Chris White, Casey Pierce. They've all gotten in on the act. Melchiori to add his third PAT of the day. And the Kent State Golden Flashes, averaging 11 points per game, have now opened up a 16-point, 33-17 lead. Casey Pierce, second touchdown grab of the day. Ran that quick out. Reared and put it on him. Touchdown, Kent State. Rain coming down in this uh, chilly uh, autumnal afternoon here at Dick Stadium, but those wearing the colors, the Kent State Golden Flash is feeling uh, pretty warm right now. They're up 33-17. Look at them today. Gerard, they came into today 124th, that's second to the last in the FBS of the red zone at only 58%. Today, 7 for 7. That'll do it for you right there. Yeah, they have cured those ills, have they not? Yes, they have. And Colin Reardon, by the by, has thrown for 330 yards today. That's established a brand new career high for him. This is Josh Jenkins on the Army return. Well, he's going to throw back that pass, and that's a live football. I don't know, it looked like he threw it forward, but no flags from the referees I tell you what he paid the price for throwing that play because pass rather because he got lit up on the part of the golden flashes and this hardening when you run that play and the only execution you get out of is getting right back at the 20-yard line as you see right here Jenkins laterals it and it does look like it's a forward pass as opposed to a, a lateral no penalty on the play Take the officials. They saw something we did. And Army has only averaged 18 yards a return on their uh, kickoff return opportunities. Angel Santiago on the carry and knifing in off that corner. It's Derek Roan. He's played Cuthbert on the hip. Carrick Roan also helped him out. A lot of younger players getting opportunities on uh, Paul Haynes' defensive scheme. Second and five for Santiago off play action. Wants to put it up. Won't take a shot deep. He got picked off. Malcolm Pennell. Pennell outside the numbers with some speed. Malcolm Pennell. Huge Kent State turnover from Pennell on the pick. Santiago had no business throwing this football. Pinnell was over the top. You had safeties in the middle as well. And that's exactly what you want Army to do is throw the football because it's not what they do well. Give credit to Pinnell for making a play and then returning the football for more positive yards. Great defense. But as you see right here, who are you throwing to? The receiver is blanketed. No one to throw to in that situation. Great job by Pinnell to come down with the football. I know you want to get to Edgar Poe, but Poe was covered. 
problem of course as we know with a uh, triple option prolific run game like Army you get behind you got to start throwing the football it's just not what you do normally this is Casey Pierce Pierce inside the 10 finally got pushed out of bounds just a quick out out of the slot to Pierce Gerard and that was nobody home for act for Army we spent so much time today talking about Kent State's need to protect the boundaries, have containment on the outside. And right there, Casey Pierce and Reardon exploited this Black Knights defense because no one's outside. And Pierce showed you that, hey, he's not content and happy with just two touchdowns on the day. He's trying to hit pay there for a third time. And how about a lot of kudos today to Kent State offensive coordinator Brian Rock. I mean, he's opened up the toolbox, has he not? Certainly has, and let's just put it out there and be frank. He's been under fire because of the poor offensive production, but he's definitely had a great day of calling plays on his part to help this team win another, or potentially win a football game. Shouldn't get ahead of ourselves, but right now they're in control of this game. I like how everybody is kept honest by my man, Jerron Jerry. Is Colin Reardon kept the football, and Ryan England came up with a safety spot to take Reardon down for no game. A clock running, we're approaching four minutes left. It's two possession game, it's a 16 point Kent State lead, but any kind of points here pretty much definitively puts it out of reach. Second and seven. Reardon will keep the football. Reardon inside the five will battle to the goal line. Did he get in? He did, touchdown, Kent State. And I wasn't sure if I was seeing Reardon or Santiago on that play right there. Reardon does an excellent job of running the option and getting to the end zone with conviction because he was not going to be denied. And watch the play fake by Reardon. Sees the hole, hits the hole, gets through the hole, and gets to the pay dirt. Nice job on part of Kyle Reardon of putting the ball over the line to score six points for his offense. And more importantly, put his team in a position to win this football game. Now we just touched on it, but if you're a Kent State Golden Flashes fan, you're saying, where has this kind of offensive outburst been all year long? As Anthony Melchiori, before he could add that PAT, you see Colin Reardon. I mean, the congratulations. They got a timeout before the point after, but look at Reardon, Gerard. And... You see it rear right here, it's over. Just a tough running, and I have to mention again, the young man's playing on a bad ankle. He didn't come into this game healthy, and that's a sign of toughness and leadership too. When your quarterback is willing to put his body on the line and go out there and run the football in that manner and fashion, knowing that he has a bad ankle. Well, Brian Rock is really dialed up, as we said, a very creative, diverse, Spread the football around offense today. There was some question whether or not Reardon got into the end zone, but that has been confirmed that he did score. As you see right here, gets the ball over the, that magical white line. Yeah, in the second half, five possessions for Kent State, three touchdowns, a couple of field goals. That's 27 points on five possessions. That that's solid. Yeah, I'll well, cure your red zone ills. Melchiori got that point after blocked and uh, did not convert. Oh, break down there in the left side of the Kent State. Point after touchdown unit. Kent State's lead is 22. Colin Reardon, one more look. Off that read option. Reardon took contact at the five, got in the end zone. Come on back. We'll finish this one out with Kent State up 39-17. Rainy October afternoon. Can't dampen ESPN College football for you. I'm sure Kent State with a major offensive explosion today as we take a look at our Capital One uh, performer of the day. Colin Reardon has had a superb afternoon throwing three touchdown passes and establishing a career high in yards throwing the football. <laughs> and he's played a great role in running the football as well as he has just been the man on a mission today playing injured and just doing what's necessary to help his team get in a position to win a football game. 360 yards in the air, the three TDs, and 
course the career highs in both passing yardage and touchdowns. Gerard we were here on opening night when he had established his previous career best when he threw for 264 yards in what turned out to be that loss at the gun to Ohio. Well, I'm certain Michael he'll take a win as well as a new record <laughs> as opposed to what took place last time he had a great night passing the football. Kent State. Three minutes and 57 seconds away of being able to celebrate for the first time this year and it. Uh, it looks like it's uh, it's going to come tonight, but it had not come in their first six previous tries this year. Well, Angel Sot. Well, no, they've changed quarterbacks now for the Army Black Knights. Uh, that is the the backup quarterback for Army, AJ Sure. There's Sure. He's got a lot of playing time this year. Sure, also able to uh, run this triple option offense. So AJ Sure, the junior, on the football field now. Sure, going to keep the football on the ground. That carry coming from Aaron Kemper. So Aaron Kemper in in the backfield right now. One of the running back spots. Kemper, there's Kemper, number 25. And this is one of the worst positions that you could be in as an option team because you need to advance the football down the field in a rapid manner and fashion. Well, there's that late pitch to Tony Giovanelli. He looked like a shortstop trying to handle that on the hop. The ball ate him up. <laughs> <laughs> to use the baseball partners, that, they, they gained 18 yards on it. He sure got out on the edge. You see Nate Holly still... Keen the quarterback, and the play has been there all day. Got to hold on to that football, but heck, in that case, it helped him out. How about that smart effort from Gio Vanelli after it took that hop on him, and it, he just batted, batted the it football out. out of bounds? And yeah, we expect that out of our armed forces. What a storied history and tradition it is, too. <laughs> We can't that statement. We don't expect that out of our armed forces. <laughs> We're going to call that an uh, illegal of batting the football forward. They say you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. You look at this story tradition of West Point football, 125th season, 659 wins, of course, with Glenn Davis, Doc Blanchard. In the mid-1940s, three high school trophy winners, Pete Dawkins as well. And as we know, the one thing that, though, has been a big, big thorn in the, the Army side has been the recent woes against the Naval Academy. They'll meet in Baltimore on December 13th. The yeah, Navy has dominated that series. Hey, you think back to the 40s. Back then, it was Notre Dame. Michigan was obviously in the running as well. And Army. You're right. Those are the squads. You're right. That's what everybody wanted to play for. Yep. You see right here, sure pitches the ball. It's almost like a lateral pass. There you have it. And batting the forward as well. Get your 10 yards in the opposite direction which you want to go. Army penalized. 324 left. It's going to take a miraculous Army surge here to be able to get back in this one down 22. Let's take another look from our end zone camera. You see, it's a forward. It's a pass. Goes forward. Viewed as a pass. So they viewed that again, yeah, as uh, lateral and a legal forward pass yes. there. In moments, we will get the explanation from referee Don Willard today. David Nowak and Matty uh, Aloiso are. After further review, the quarterback pass was completely beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the pass. That's an illegal forward pass, which was incomplete. Pass was thrown from the 37 yard line. The five yard penalty from that spot lost it down. Ball be placed at the 32 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 328. It'll start on the snap. Very thorough explanation there. That it was. Legal forward pass. And 
It's going to cost uh, Army as referee Don Willard and his crew got together. Just came up and took a look at it with our replay officials, David Nowak and uh, Matty Aloiso. And Army now looking at second down and let's call it 14 from their 32 yard line. Well, they need a lot of points and in an awful hurry. Sure. Will throw underneath. Pass is caught. Football came out. Football came out. Now they're saying that the line judge, before Nate Holly came away with it, the line judge is saying that uh, it was ruled down. Making the catch was uh, Edgar Poe, the sophomore. It's a guarantee. Nate Holly will be on the football or create a fumble to get a hold of that football. But right here, give credit to Poe for fighting for extra yards and not quitting and saying never die. At some point, you do have to get down because you have two mean defenders trying to get that ball from you. And Marcus Moore was in pursuit. Sure. On the move. Going to unload that throw incomplete. Unfortunately for sure, it wasn't complete because the receiver initially stepped out of bounds and couldn't have been eligible to catch it in the first place. Kent State has gotten a very solid defensive effort today. And remember, now, Jeff Monken and Army, their two wins this year are over Mid-American Conference squads. They beat Buffalo in the opener, and then they beat Ball State a couple of weeks ago. Both of them at home. Sure, going to run option. Joe Walker on that late pitch. He sure made it. He made sure that that pitch was a pitch and behind him. <laughs> He also placed it about three yards behind Joe Walker, who had to reach back to haul it in. Yeah, and in the process, he got leveled by Nate Holly. I mean, Nate Holly knocked him into another world. And that's why Santiago is coming back onto the football field. And sure is going out. And you'll see it right here. Watch number 18, the bomber screen. And this is what you call laying the boom. Oh, back live. Santiago got rocked. Look at the Kent State hit. <laughs> from true freshman Marcus Moore, number 45. Well, it's fair to say, Michael, they figured out how to play this option. They're part of Kent State Golden Flashes. See right here, Marcus Moore runs through the hole, sees quarterback, attack quarterback. Now, Army is going to uh, take a timeout here on uh, fourth down and seven to try to keep this drive alive. One final gasp before the the Black Knights with just 228 left. So it's looking more and more like Kent State is going to be able to take a huge sigh of relief and uh, celebrate a homecoming win in front of uh, all the uh, the alum and those that have come back to campus here at Dick Stadium. Yeah, and it's something you can build off of because you played it well on both ends. And you see Mel Glory today, and he's had a lot of part in the success of this football team being able to get the lead in this game by kicking field goal after field goal. Had a little hiccup on extra point, but I'm sure he'll take the field goals as well. Four of them. Perfect four for four today for one of the most talented kickers we have in college football, Anthony Melchiori. Well, Santiago got flushed. Richard Gray was on the boundary putting on heat Santiago's throw it complete nowhere to throw nowhere to hide as I mentioned four for four and Army has just turned it over on downs Melchiori ties a catch state mark with his four field goal makes today so if catch state now with 219 left we'll have an opportunity to run this one out Army went out Army has debatable as to whether head coach Jeff Monken is going to use them down by 22. That's three strong possessions. As Colin Reardon. So let's check that. Now Nathan struck that. Now Nathan struck is in at quarterback and 
Strock going to keep the football. So there's a good look at Nathan Strock, 185 pound freshman out of Zanesville. Redshirt freshman, was in the program last year, didn't participate. Strock comes right in, picks up seven yards. Way to start. It's your opportunity, take advantage of it. Anthony Murray, there you see Murray will remain offset at the running back spot. This is like a game winning possession here for Kent State. Off the read option, Murray on the carry. Got to the 40 yard line. 90 seconds left in it. Got to feel good for Paul Haynes, Gerard. Head coach told us this week, he said there's no reason why this football team can't go six consecutive weeks of winning now and go six and six on the year. He said, we lost six. We're in three of them to win. No reason why. Let's set the goals to win six straight to end the year. Yeah, and the flashes have shown flashes of brilliance, especially in this football game and other games in which they had the opportunity. It was just a mistake here and there. But, yes, you got to like the message that Coach Haynes is sending to the rest of his squad of, hey, guys, if we shore up these mental errors that we're making, it's not physical. We can compete. It's mental, in which they have to clear up. And if they can do that, it's realistic to say you can remain positive and win the next six games. Anthony Murray trying to reach that 39-yard line. He did. And so the clock will stop momentarily. Look at Kent State. Boy, they got a lot of big football games still to come after this win today. They go to Miami next week, come home to Toledo, and then go to Bowling Green after that at Buffalo and finish out on November 25th with their arch rivals, the Akron Zips, who lost today, by the way, at Ohio, as did Bowling Green at home to Western Michigan as we take a look, as I mentioned, the Miami schedule, or excuse me, the uh, Kent State schedule starting with Miami next week. So final snap of the afternoon as the Kent State Golden Flashes take a 13-10 halftime lead and outscore Army 26-7 in the second half as Paul Haynes and Jeff Mockett congratulate one another. A record-setting afternoon for that man, number 10, middle of your screen. Colin Reardon, the Kent State quarterback. That's right, Colin Reardon picked the right day, that being homecoming for these Kent State Golden Flashes to show up and play some meaningful and significant football for his team because it was all about his arm and it was about his ability to run the football as well. Leads to a victory for the hope, Kent State. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed it today, everybody, as uh, fireworks rage here at Dick Stadium. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on the family of ESPN Networks, Log on to WatchESPN.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN. Now for our tremendously talented production crew, for my partner Gerard Cherry, I'm Michael Regai. Say it's so long, everybody, from Dick Stadium, the campus of Kent State University, where Kent State wins the first, beat Army 39-17. Have a great weekend, everyone. So long.